I didn't go this time for the uh, Temple of Artemis. <clears throat> yeah, because uh, uh, that feels like for Canada, for, uh, you go for Goddess of Temple the Hunt of and you immediately go for Temple of Artemis like almost every time, mm. right? That's like yeah. a Canada yeah. thing to do. Uh, that feels like for Canada. Yeah. He's even, Noob is even chopping his deer tiles to get the Temple of Artemis. <laughs> How is Damn. this a good thing? Wow, okay. Oh, I see. He's chopping the woods off of them, but he's leaving the deer in place. So yeah. he can still have the camp. Oh, the very clever. Very, very, very clever. I love to see that sort of stuff. I know, but still, these are not going to be good tiles to work. Well, I guess he's going to get, like, look at how, look how many deer tiles he has. This is unbelievable. Six, like, deer tiles around his uh, cities. Uh, amazing, Jesus. amazing. And there's also an extra pasture there, too, with the horses. But, man, I, I think, I mean, a two food, two production and a little bit of gold on a deer tile. You you could do worse, you know? You could do worse. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think he's uh, definitely looking at this volcano, uh, you know, and he's like, okay, well, that deer tile is going to be uh, <laughs> lavad, so maybe maybe not go there. It's fine. Just chop it as, uh, as fast as possible. Get it there. You might not get a second chance to do this. That's true, because when the lava erupts, it gets rid of the woods. That's right. I didn't even think about it. Michael, you're so smart. We need, I need you in like my backseat uh, when I'm playing safe so you can remind <laughs> me of all these things. Good God. Um, Off microphone somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me this. Uh, I'm coming into the game slightly late because I was a little bit late to the yep. show. Uh, you've probably done a review of all the player start locations. Whose start location do you like the most right now? At the moment, Canada. I love Canadian spawn. He has, he already got Goddess of the Hunt, has three of these improved. Look at the tiles, 4-3-2, 4-4-2, 4 3 2, four, four, two, four, three, two. And then God. he's going to, he's going to get another two of these to improve. Like really? Oh my God. Uh, with the geothermal features, four extra adjacency towards campuses, nailed from Kaguana, one of these builders. And he's going to start improving with that builder more tiles. And now uh, he just needs to be careful to uh, keep his warrior alive. Um, <clears throat> other than that, it, I do see him going for a holy set. The biggest thing that I want to point out here, we got a 2v2 on the seas, or uh, two versus one that will probably turn into a 2v2. We got England, Victoria, with Australia uh, to the south that will need to go against England, Eleanor coming up over here. And it looks like there is a possibility for uh, Phoenicia to keep on settling the northwest, but he's not. So he's going to leave all alone England over here for uh, to take on both of those uh, opponents. That is going to be quite a problem. Yeah, interesting that they're not going up there to contest that coastal area. It, it looks like England's going to have the run of the seas. Yeah. Yes, well, he's, uh, I think the seas might win because um, Australia over here usually is extremely well known for getting uh, very, very fast uh, caravels. I think uh, the last time we timed it, it was turn 46 caravels. That's extremely early. That's... Yeah, that is really early. That's insanely yeah. early. And it's it's especially doable because your teammates are feeding you boosts and gold and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, the gold, yeah, and because um, Australia does get the extra um, adjacency bonuses towards, yeah, the adjacency towards uh, his campuses, he's, he's gonna get really good campuses. Um, but uh, I was that's another thing that I uh, didn't actually point out about this spawn. This looks like a much slower spawn than usual, doesn't have a lot of uh, breathtaking appeal all over the place. No, which will only definitely one or hurt. two here or there, yeah. which is definitely gonna hurt, especially because those breathtaking tiles aren't adjacent to those reefs for those really yeah. nice campuses. Exactly. He, he, he's still going to have, she's still going to have a plus three and a plus three. Uh, by the way, Paul over here is um, a very well-known uh, player um, from the CVFR community. And uh, we've seen her yesterday play uh, Japan. She came out today to play with uh, Zone of Control this time. Yeah, I saw that yesterday. I saw that. I, we, in fact, she was in the game we were watching yesterday, and I, I'm familiar yeah. with. Uh, I'm familiar with Synth. I've seen Synth play before. I've seen Noob six uh, three four play as well a lot. Actually, I think. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. only players I don't know are on the second team and Chuck. I think that's a new player to me. Uh, Chuck being Mapuche. Mapuche. Mapuche is. Uh, oh my God! I like. I would have loved to see some Malon Raiders. Mapuche here is gonna have a hard time getting them to his, towards his opponent. He's like, look, look at this land to the west side. Towards his closest opponent, there's all water. <laughs> it's like a one-tail choke here, and that's about it. 
Yeah, that's not very good, especially because it feels like the um, Lautaro is the kind of leader that you want to be aggressive in the mid game, right? And it looks like he has yeah. like a Sim City start. Which is how good is the Mapuche Sim City? Um, if you have a lot of playtaking tiles, it's good because you got the Shemamuls Chim- and those give you that extra culture and so on. But most of the time, it's just normal Sim City, which doesn't actually shine anywhere. Uh, this is going to be a bit tough for him to get everything going. He's going to need to play it normally and he's going to need to get the district discount going as f- as much as possible. Otherwise, he's not going to have mm. a chance. Uh, you've seen yesterday China go crazy. This is the same Kublai China. Uh, we're gonna probably see the same oh my god stats coming up from him yeah and Jokas is is the one playing that China and I've seen Jokas play before yeah. and he is no slouch at this game uh, China yeah. yesterday was easily what was maybe top two top three in that game that we were watching they were insane insane culture insane science and uh, I think we might even see China perform better in this game because this time he has teammates that he can rely on to propel him forward with better international trade routes and a lot more civic boosts. Yeah, I'm actually curious uh, if he's going to do something about Greece here. Noob 634, even though he did manage to get Temple of Artemis, he doesn't have an easy land to work with. A lot of choke points, volcanoes... Uh... Not a lot of tiles to work in the capital. It's a bit awkward all over the place. Um, I, I definitely agree. It's a very, very awkward starting location. But he does have kind of okay land. If you look in every direction, there's a good little bit of land to the left. There's a good little bit of land to the southeast. Yeah, he yeah. has decent land, but his start is rough. He made such a big sacrifice to go for that Temple of Artemis. And I think it was worth it, but at the same time, it put him back quite a bit. Everybody else has two cities, uh, even three cities. He's barely getting his second one out. This is going to be quite uh, quite a problem for him to get his tempo going back. Well, I mean, hopefully Only... the... Is it, the thing about the Temple of Artemis is that usually that's something that gives tempo to your capital. But if your capital's tile quality isn't very high, having lots of population probably won't have much of an impact so hopefully he can make that temple of artemis work here because it looks awkward yeah i think this was a major deny major deny the, the, from canada like imagine canada with these tier tiles and temple of artemis on top of it <laughs> oh yeah do you know what that actually totally makes sense in fact i'm fully on board now with deny gaming he made the right yeah. choice to, to deny it yeah, we do have actually uh, Canada going for a religion here. Multiple holy sites coming up from him. Uh, it won't have a lot of uh, faith coming up from these holy sites exactly, but he is gonna get um, he's gonna get a lot of them through all his cities. I like that he's already setting himself up for uh, that the culture play. He's so far away from anybody that could attack him so far away, and I think this might actually come to a culture victory later on in the game because look at this. You know oh the national parks? <laughs> yeah, this is just like anything. Such, <laughs> such a godlike spawn for, for a Canada culture victory. You're miles away from anyone. You have really high appeal and you have a massive mountain range between you and your closest enemy. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable coming up for uh, Pupu over here. Pupu Mestari. I would love to see uh, to know what this means, by the way. These, uh, Suomi is a Finnish... Um, um, team by the way and uh, zone of control of course is uh, international um, it does actually Pupu Mestari mean something Barney champion Curtis Love coming up over here from uh, Suomi in the chat telling us Pupu Mestari means Barney champion well uh-huh. I think if he's a Barney champion he is going to be my favorite player in this game because I have a cute little rabbit over there in the corner who is giving me death stares because I gave her Less biscuits than <laughs> usual for breakfast. Oh, oh! <laughs> you gotta take care of her, man. You gotta take care of her. My, uh, my cat is also uh, sleeping on the on the window. He's giving me stares from time to time. Uh, also, one other bit of um, uh, I want to say uh, one other bit of information here. Suomi actually means Finnish in Finland. Means Finland in Finnish. Can you can you imagine that? Okay. Interesting. I I wouldn't have thought it's such a big difference to say Finland in Finnish. 
Okay, so what do we have here as um, a Pantheons? I do see God of the Sea coming up for England. It looks like Australia went for fertility rights. This is the second time we actually uh, we see Pulp go for fertility rights. When she went yesterday for the same thing, uh, did manage to get three series out, and I see uh, she's starting up with the campuses. One, two, three of them are the counts. She's gonna discount something. I'm actually quite, quite curious what is she gonna try to discount. Yeah, no. we got Moksha. Out yes. of curiosity, so what does fertility has fertility rights been changed in the uh, BBG mod? Uh, yes, so fertility rights first of all gives you a builder, uh, and the second bonus of fertility rights you get extra food, one extra food on uh, wheat tiles, rice tiles, and I believe there was another one. Oh, maize tiles, uh, and uh, cattle tiles. I think cattle was also introduced. That sounds incredible. So, so she's going to be running away with growth, which is honestly amazing yeah. as Australia because you get so much housing from the coastline. Yeah, that's probably exactly why she wants to go here. And of of course, she's going to have, uh, you see, so many wheat tiles to improve. This is going to be quite amazing. Uh, one other thing, uh, she did have uh, droughts coming up to the south of Canberra. Needs to be careful um, uh, how she's going to improve stuff over here because those droughts will definitely take those improvements out. I don't know how that works, though. Like when you have a drought, like how is the drought affecting the quality of a uh, passion how, how is that possible <laughs> you, know, you know sometimes you're like, better off just not questioning things when it comes to civilization <laughs> six logic yeah. but uh, th the horrible thing about droughts is if they spawn once in a place the whole game you're going to get droughts in that one place because it feels like at least that's how it yeah. feels like in my game when I play. Yeah, yeah, it, that's no, no, that's exactly what's happening. That's usually, unfortunately, it is exactly what's happening. Uh, they do tend to. Uh, keep happening if one if it happens once it's going to happen all over the game um, but you do get some options to mitigate them for example aqueducts uh, in in this particular case she cannot put an aqueduct from canberra so it's a bit unfortunate yeah very unfortunate but i mean like you know an aqueduct isn't the most important thing in the world but we i do like to see those three campuses coming out and I, i'm so not used to seeing players go campus first because in a free-for-all, that would be like incredibly greedy, wouldn't it be? Because you'd be leaving yourself so open to um, someone who went for like fast culture or some other play. But in team games, it's very viable to do this, isn't it? Yeah, 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 for sure. I, I got an information over here, uh, feedback on my comment over there. Looks like the animals don't get enough water. That's how the quality goes down. I understand the lack of food, which I totally agree with. How does it catch on fire? <laughs> you know, how does it get pillaged? <laughs> Anyway, um, another comment coming up from Ted Ferguson. He was mentioning that the droughts happen whenever there's a lack of food or uh, uh, not food, sorry, forest and um, rainforest on uh, nine tiles on nine tiles. And uh, they tend to happen on the same uh, in the same places because that's where the nine tiles are. I guess uh, we're going to need to see if Australia later on in the game is going to manage to get some uh, woods in here to mitigate that uh, problem. We'll see. Uh, yeah. Aussie here, 13 science already. 13 what? science. That is nearly double everyone else in the game. Yeah. And look at that. Noob did manage to get uh, two more set results. He's going for the fifth one. Uh, I gotta say, he doesn't have bad stats on eight science and five um, culture. Uh, did, and they did buy him a builder now. And it does look like uh, he is on 12 gold at 10. But his, his uh, lack of production so it's quite problem 16 production coming up from him when everybody else is 25 plus yeah that's a rough it's a little bit of a rough start for greece it's not impossible by any stretch of the imagination but the fact now that yeah. he's actually going for ics infinite city settle he's not going for three cities he's not going for four cities it looks like he's going all the way straight to five cities off the back of that temple of artemis yep yep uh i would have loved to see the same thing happening here on uh, canada oh that's actually what that's he's exactly. doing exactly <laughs> yeah, so settlers, settlers coming out. Are these players, they're going for a mass amount of cities. Uh, is that because they are the pockets? They are the safe players? I think, honestly, everybody's safe right now. It's, they they have such a spawn that nothing will happen until probably Renaissance, when we're going to have those carnivals. I think the first the first attack, the first pokey pokes against each other will probably be England, uh, facing off uh, the other England, uh, Synth and, of course, Australia. Because other than that, who do we have in the proximity? We have Phoenicia with uh, Greece in the proximity. But 
they still have like a a, a decent amount of land to go for between them. And let's face it, Phoenicia is not going to build a land army, <laughs> you know, or, or at least at the beginning, he's, he's not going to build a land army. He's going to be focused on uh, getting the cities uh, out on the coast, try to get the Cothons out, try to get an economy and probably be defensive about this. Yeah, for sure. I mean, <clears throat> I, I, I think the other thing as well is Greece is probably going to be the one trying to get like Sim up to a massive culture gain so that they can defend against Canada's culture victory. So I imagine these players are going to sidestep each other and try to kind of play around each other rather than directly engage. Yeah, exactly. Well, this is uh, going to be quite an issue for Pericles. Uh, he is one of the quote unquote frontliners, and he is, like you said, going to be the main one defending the culture victory. Uh, gonna be a tough one gonna be a tough one or maybe maybe just maybe we're gonna see Mapuche uh, pick up the slack here and try to go for um, Oracle try to get those theater squares try to be the one uh, doing the culture but honestly you wouldn't really think Mapuche is the one defending culture in a game with Pericles on the same team like, it just feels unnatural you know no I definitely agree I, I, I can't help but feel if Athens uh, or if Greece and Mapuche were swapped, uh, Zoc would be much happier with their positioning on the map. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see Australia here. Australia is going to be booming. Look at that. She's already 18 science and 12 culture, 27. We didn't even get to the classical era. And we got four more turns and she's just <laughs> running away with the science and the culture. She is absolutely uh, booming, definitely. Uh, so what do you expect to see from Australia this game? Is this standard Australia play? Uh, a bit non-standard, I would say. Usually with Australia, you tend to stay on maximum of four cities and you try to go for the caravel timing. And the reason you go for four cities is um, you do need to get the um, economy up. So you can actually, when you get to the caravels, you actually need to have the harbors uh, intact. You need to have the admirals, you need to, the projects and so on. Uh, and that's usually why you don't have time to go for extra settlers. Um, in, in this particular case, looks like she is opting to go a little wide than usual and i think this is because she knows she has the support of england uh, from the north of uh, victoria victoria Definitely. here that is a little gonna... bit of extra confidence you get when you know someone yeah. else is going to be the one to do the caravel timing yeah exactly and of course uh, being in a team setup uh, they can trade with each other you've seen yesterday how hard it was for them to make their own gold uh, and uh, try to go for any kind of timing over there even even Ottomans, who was upgrading his units with so little gold, uh, had problems getting that gold. Yep, he was definitely struggling. And, and don't forget, this isn't just trading. This is trading over the ocean, which is one of the most effective ways to generate gold in the game of Civ. So these yep. guys, when it comes to the mid game, they are going to be rolling in cash. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a bit more, I would say, actually, on... Uh, I, would, I would trust a lot more the economy of uh, zone of control rather than the economy of uh, Suomi in this particular case. I like that England and Phoenicia can trade with each other. I, I just don't see that many cities at the moment trading with each other. Uh, well, on this side, we're going to have two naval powers just sending them their trade routes to each other with uh, so much uh, sea between them. Yeah, they're going to be stacked with cash. And I think actually Canada is on that uh, ocean down there as well, or the the sea. So they might be able to get a coastal city up and begin trading with uh, England. And, uh, oh my God, that is an amazing wheat tile. All right, 6-1. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Um, you know what would have been massive here? Just if he had uh, an ability to get that uh, water mill, <laughs> get an extra protection on these tiles. Oh, yes. Yeah, but, uh, man, I can't help but feel. Us. Can you imagine if they had settled, if, if she had settled on the the river there and built a watermill? <sighs> it was so <laughs> yes. good. One tile to the west, one tile to the west. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, uh, anyway, it is. I do like. I do like Australia going more wide than usual. And I think this is uh, actually her uh, learning from the mistakes of yesterday. You've seen yesterday she did put off uh, getting the second settles, third settles, uh, like the second wave of settles. And I think that actually hurt her uh, during the mid to late part of the game. She never could catch up again because of that. Yep. So I, I think now she's like, no, this game, I'm going to do my best. Yeah, big time. This is the big league, so I can imagine going super wide is really important. I, You know, 
the thing that happens too though when you go super wide is you feel like all your cities suck if you go too wide too early so it is a hard thing to balance i understand why sometimes people like to stay on a few uh, a couple less cities <clears throat> yeah true true uh, we do have city patient Ganes coming up for uh, mapuche he is going for the sim uh, as much as possible he got his fourth settle but he's already a bit behind uh, everybody when it comes to the cities um, even Pericles that started up a little later is going to have more cities than him so I'm curious uh, how he's going to manage to catch back up with uh, stats in the next part of the game he's on 10 science and 15 culture coming up with uh, Moksha getting his uh, Gavron Plaza and uh, did stop a little while to get those campuses a bit um, unsynchronized here or desynced I would say because of the he went for one campus and then he went for a commercial and then put down his Gavron Plaza he, I don't think he discounted everything, anything here no, that's Which a little is, bit unfortunate because uh, those district yeah. discounts are really, really important because you get half price on your districts. Yeah, the, the, the major thing is it's like in the meta. When somebody, die, when like the majority of the players start doing something, you're out of the loop if you don't do the same thing. Even if your your way of doing things is like your preferred one, you you just can't keep up with everybody else. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, the district discount mechanic is it's really unintuitive and it kind of makes you play in a very strange way um but because it's in the game players are going to exploit it to their maximum advantage they're going to build one type of district and then another type of district yeah yeah L like you see over here on uh, australia three campuses then she's going to go for the harbors she discounted uh, one harbor then she's going to go for a uh, Gavron plaza and i'm pretty sure uh, we're going to see the same pattern uh multiple holy sites coming up over here from uh, canada oh 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 great prophet great prophet gonna be yeah, on we uh, might get to see ourselves a religion yeah uh, we we got here on time two four six cities seven cities he's going to be on seven cities in the next uh, seven turns five to seven turns seven cities that is an incredibly fat canada he's been guzzling down the maple syrup uh, what sort of religion yeah. do you expect here from canada oh that's a good question uh i would say he's gonna go for the plus two faith at jcc plus two um uh, culture from theater squares uh belief i totally forgot how it's called i believe that's uh, and... lay ministry yeah Lay ministry, yes. Uh, and the first one, I've seen most of the time people go for coral, but work, with, work ethic would be my second choice here. I think coral is probably going to be the way here. Um, I, I, I usually, if it's not Canada, I'm, I'm a very big fan of uh, the food one, uh, Feed the oh, World, yeah. but... Uh, Canada got... just gets so much food anyway. <laughs> Looks like the religion <laughs> you know? has been founded. Were you predicting oh, feed, feed the world, the world, and, feed pilgrimage. The world and pilgrimage? Interesting. I wouldn't have thought of pilgrimage, honestly. And I can explain myself. Uh, well, there are there are two things um, coming up over here. First, if if he wants to make pilgrimage work, uh, overlay ministry, he needs to spread his religion into his uh, uh, neighbor cities. Like uh, maybe send a missionary to the Moshe city of uh, Phoenicia, send one to uh, Eleanor. And that way he's going to have more faith coming up from his cities. Otherwise, if he will keep on building holy sites in, the, in each city, that's basically lay ministry you get an extra plus two for each city <laughs> you know yeah uh, and then he's a hundred percent gonna build those um uh, culture districts he's gonna get the theater squares where lay ministry you'd get that amount of culture as well at the same time so it, it kind of you know it, it kind of made sense to go for a ministry it's interesting and uh they're because those aren't the beliefs that I would have picked, but I think going for Feed the World as Canada, when you're already running away with this much growth, we're going to see cities that hit 13 population incredibly early into this game. I agree. And the housing will be a problem. It's going to need to get a lot of housing here. Uh, of course, Feed the World does give you a bit of housing also, but with so much food coming out from the deer tiles and Feed the World at the same time, it feels a bit overkill. <laughs> uh, I'm actually really curious how Pupu Mespitali is going to... Uh, try to get this going yeah, uh, really one second Mike 
Go my ahead. cat is very annoyed i'm not letting him outside one second <laughs> okay one michael second. you go look after your cat and i'll talk a little bit about the game i think like if we take a look here we can see that canada has one two three four five incredible deer tiles in his capital that is what 20 food plus an additional three seven ten twelve fourteen production 20 food 14 production and then another 10 gold oh, from those five tiles. That. that's insanity welcome back michael yeah, uh, thank you, thank you. I'm sorry, my. Uh, no, you're uh, good. You're good. Hey, look, kitty cat needs to be looked after, and yes. uh, we do in fact see Canada over there. They are settling on that ocean so that they are on that lake so they can trade with their ally. Yeah, another good city coming up from him. So many geothermals on the east side. The reef fish and plus four campus there. Oh uh, gonna get if a only bit of you faith. could build campuses on the water, Michael. That would be a plus six campus <laughs> between yes, all those. Yes. Oh. Oh, you were talking yesterday about the mechanics of um, Beyond Earth, and I was like, "Where uh, the water cities, man? Yeah, I know. Water right? cities that move. Where, where water cities that move? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you Unfortunately, know? you have to play Indonesia if you want to build cities on the water because of their yeah. little kampongs. They're like little towns. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, let's see. We got uh, 1033. Now we got everybody with a golden age. Let's see what they picked up. I think everybody got a golden age, right? Yeah, yeah. It's 4v4, totally different setup. Uh, Joke is, Pen Brush and Voice, uh, Goldenish, Kublai Khan, China, four cities. He's getting his uh, harbors out. I see Pupu Mestari, more mentality, Goldenish, with uh, 25 faith a turn. This is actually quite a low number of faith uh, for uh, early monumentality, by the way. Uh, Tadrak, uh, Pen Brush and Voice, 8 science, 25 culture, going for horses, actually. Interesting. Horseback riding is going to be his uh, choice of a technology. Maybe he is worried about uh, Greece, but going horses against Greece does feel like a bit awkward. Uh, Uralfish, free inquiry Golden Age, Eleanor of Aquitaine, 14 science, 22 culture, didn't actually build all of his Royal Navy dockyards, and he is starting to put them up. Uh, okay, and we got uh, Chuck, Penbrush and Voice Golden Age, Autocracy, uh, Paul Pond, Penbrush and Voice uh, Golden Age, 30 science and 27 culture on Australia. This that is. is a very Massive. respectable sim he is his yeah. brain is expanding as uh, uh, sorry her brain is expanding as her science rolls in yeah this this is going to be quite something uh one city state did get taken down though and i'm actually curious which one was it oh it was rapa nui uh since did manage to take out a uh, free city state over here and uh, since does have a pen brush and voice so this time with 11 science and 30 culture, she's going to need to put down quite a few campuses to catch up uh, in the science screen. But uh, she does have a few good ones. She's going to need to chop that deer tile for a plus four. I, I do um, have a question about the uh, the capture yes, of Rapa Nui. Is this just a case of like, well, I built two galleys. I may as well do something with them. Uh, well... I think the galleys she got for free from the Royal Navy dockyards, and then Rapanui was just there. She, he was sitting pretty. Yeah, um, like a free if, I'm just going to yoink it. It's free. Yeah, exactly. You might as well do it. Uh, the the thing I've seen actually quite a few tears shed because of city states uh, managing to get either walls or a boat. If a city state gets a boat, you can't really hit it. Oh <laughs> yeah, no, it's just GG, it's so annoying. Dude. Yeah. No, I think that's one of the most frustrating like things in the game is when you're going for a city state and then they pop out like an archer or walls or something and you're like, well, there goes four of my units. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, uh, she, the good thing is she does have two, four, six cities already and I'm pretty sure she's going to need to get another one here to uh, get it on the stone tile. And then, yeah, six uh, cities I think is, she... is a really, really good start into the game. Considering it's turn 34, she's on six cities. That's a really damn nice start into the game. I would be very happy yeah. in her position. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, uh, Canada over here already putting down those theater squares. I am curious if he's uh, going to go for uh, Oracle. Definitely needs to go for Oracle. Uh, we do have uh, horses coming up from his cities. I think horses will need to take down Caguana. Only a 20 garrison defense strength city, and you know, city is a city, so you might as well uh, try to go for it quickly. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, if you could build two, three horsemen to get a free city, and then you still have a military hanging around, that's awesome. Uh, out of curiosity, Dido has that incredible settler building strategy. Do you think we're going to see an ancestral hall move here? Or do you think you're going to see a standard audience chamber play? Oh, that's a good question. I think standard audience, by the looks of it, uh, he doesn't have a lot of land to play with, and even though I like uh, that he could keep, keep on expanding to the north. Um, I, I don't see him going for that. 
Right. Usually, ancestral hall makes sense when you actually keep on settling. So, for example, if he would have started building ancestral hall now, before he actually got the settlers, even if he delayed the actual settle for a few turns, uh, it would have given him those um, two builders, which would have made sense. Now, audience chamber seems to be a much better pick. You know, ancestral hall only would give you another what, three, four series uh, bonuses, three, four builders. It's just not worth compared to the food that you get and the amenity that you get from uh, Ancestral Hall. No, you explained that beautifully. That makes total sense to me. Uh, yeah, uh, Audience Chamber seems much more likely. Yeah. Uh, we do have him getting the items out. And this is another major factor here. Phoenicia needs to do something uh, when they will find out. Because at the moment, they don't know particularly uh, how the land looks like. If I take a look at the vision, uh, they, they don't know much of uh, the west side here. Uh, so, oh, oh no, wait, they found out about Australia. Okay, they found out. They don't know how many cities he has here. And I think they found out about England. So they know both of their opponents are on this particular sea. Uh, they need to deal with them somehow. Uh, and this is the moment that Phoenicia needs to realize he needs to put more production centers, city centers on this coast of uh, Eleanor. So he can help out his buddy later on in the game. Otherwise, this is going to go sideways really fast for uh, Eleanor. Like, I like Eleanor. I like uh, the ability of her to get a lot of stats and so on. But at, at the end of the game, uh, it's a matter of uh, units as well. Just sheer unit count. And if um, England will not manage to outproduce or at least keep the production up with um, uh, Victoria or um, Australia, it's going to be a major problem. Yeah, I mean, like this could. This is a game that, depending on how things go, it could be decided at Caravels, especially because if you just look at how many cities Australia and England have on the coast that they can produce boats from, compare that to Eleanor, who's only yeah. got what like four cities on the coast. That is a bit of a scary position to be in. What do yeah, you think yeah. Eleanor could do? Could she clog up the choke points halfway between the world? Could you know? Uh. A bit hard, actually. A bit yeah, hard. It's they, a lot these of are choke points. Yeah, and the, the, the choke points only hold until frigates. So the, the, you need you need to somehow keep trading, like not focus on the choke points, keep trading boats. And this is going to be very hard. I, I don't want to do a prediction here because it's um, it it's up to both teams. So maybe England is not going to fully commit maybe Australia is going to go for late sim instead of going for caravels um, and there are so many maybes that it's, it's very hard to predict ideally you want them committing to this and you want them to go against Eleanor and um, if they figure out uh, Eleanor is going to be weak or uh, they have an opportunity they will go for it I'm, I'm not so certain exactly how this is going to play out. Uh, what, what certainly needs to happen, they need an insane amount of gold. And uh, I'm pretty sure Chuck over here will need to spam out those commercials. And that's exactly what he's doing. He started to put down commercials from, multi from more cities. Uh, three of them at the count here. And it looks like uh, he's going to have on four total. Uh, they, he's going to need to sacrifice his sim to get as much economy as possible for his uh, allies. Uh, maybe maybe this is a sign actually that uh, Australia is going to go for those uh, caravels. Yeah, it's, it sounds like they're gearing up for an all-in risky play because here's the thing. If you have two people on your team go all in and take out another person on the enemy team, I think that puts you in a pretty damn good position. Even though those two guys have kind of like burnt their economy a little bit, then it's a 4v3. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And oh, of course, over here, Australia getting those campuses oh my god this uh and now you, you do see how much it takes uh, her to actually build all these campuses up it, it's lost that uh, she lost that uh, discount and it's uh wow <laughs> 23 times to build a campus 12 times to build another one oh man that's a long time yeah it really just goes to show you like getting those first districts up in your in your later settled cities is so incredibly slowly especially because it goes incredibly slowly because it, especially because oh my god i'm stumbling over my words <laughs> <laughs> especially because uh, districts get more expensive the more of the tech tree that you have researched yeah we got some calls for uh, jessica in the chat here uh, asking asking us if uh, she's playing uh, that's a good question i'm not sure if she's playing throughout the community here i think i did see her in the channels i'm not sure exactly what game is she playing uh quote of arms 
Uh, sh- let me actually take a look if she's in one of the games. Uh, to- I do have to give a big shout out, by the way, for Jessica uh, getting uh, her girls together, uh, Synth and uh, Pulp. Very nice, very nice. Uh, how do you mean they, she got her girls together? Yeah, she got them together on uh, Zone of Control, on the same clan. Oh, nice one. Where, nice one. Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize they were all in the same clan. Well, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I we definitely not so sure. We definitely could use more women in the in the Civ Six scene playing multiplayer. Um, yes. So yes, plus plus. So, uh, we haven't talked much about China in a little while. Could we zoom on over there and have a little chat about them? Uh, China, China, China. Yes, four series China. This is actually quite surprising about China. I don't think he has anything to worry about on the coast, but he actually started building uh, galleys. Uh, and going for audience chamber, yes, tall cities and tall city play. Oh, I see what's going on. He can't move. So he would get a maximum uh, extra city on the west side and then he can't move anywhere unless he gets shipbuilding. So he would need to settle this, uh, this coast to the south and probably that's the stopper here. He doesn't have shipbuilding yet. Uh, Joke is going for bronze, going for recorded sea study. I see Odin Shimba coming up from him, multiple campuses. Looks like he's going to be quite late on his uh, development. Uh, he's going for a tall play rather than uh, anything else. Uh, but I do like his campuses. Look at the, look at this setup of his. Beijing, Riftile, uh, Gavron Plaza, Mountains. <laughs> that okay. is a beautiful setup, especially because most of those districts will have two to four adjacent to them. What is that like? A, what, how, how much adjacency is that? That's... Well, uh, that's uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five adjacency on a campus. That is, honestly, that's yeah. worthy of taking a screenshot and put it on the Civ subreddit. That is a really, 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 really <laughs> nice campus. Man, I, I, you got to explain me the Civ subreddit. Let's, let's take a moment here. Let's take a beat. I think you have a much bigger hold on the Reddit uh, community than I do. Uh, what is going on with the C- subreddit? What do they like? What do they dislike? Or oh, how are they uh, behaving over there? I'm going to be honest with you. The simplest way to uh, to get on the good side of the Civ, Civ subreddit is to make really fat tiles with huge amounts of culture on them, huge amounts of science, really big adjacency on your districts. Take a picture of it and slap it up there. They eat that shit up day and night. It is the best part. Um, the other thing that you can do ah. is um, uh, make memes. Every now and again, the moderators let memes slip through your, their radar. So those are the two things they love. <clears throat> uh, okay. We, we actually had with uh, CPL, we had like a love-hate relationship with uh, the Civ subreddit. And they, they don't want uh, us advertising the community, but uh, somehow they want the content. <laughs> you know, it's like, come on, <laughs> let, us, let us through. Interesting, really. So they 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 are reticent to let you put your posts up. That what um um that so back in the day, um, uh, Kanak didn't know that you you can't just go out and just you know send messages about hey join here. This is a full community and so on and so forth. You gotta do it a little bit more uh, uh, carefully say, and respectfully. Uh, carefully, yeah. yeah, exactly. So uh, he, well, he started with the right foot instead of the left foot. Uh, well, with the wrong foot, let's say like that. Uh, the relationship, and then we tried to explain to them that we, we mean the best, and we want just the communities to work together. And uh, they have the single player, we have the multiplayer. It, it's all good, and let's somehow build a bridge, you know. It took us a while, but now I think uh, I think we we got to a normalized uh, relationship. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, and for sure. No, I I can understand that. Look, the, Reddit is a different beast. I've been on Reddit for like nearly Jesus fifteen years, and um, wow, okay, they okay. have their That's you know, a long time. Yeah, the culture on Reddit is different now. It has changed over time. I starting to not like it as much it was great back in the day i'm an old timer i remember when the upvote button meant that someone had said something interesting rather than you just disagreed or agreed with them um <clears throat> but yeah generally speaking the the best way to interact with reddit communities is to have a little chat with the moderators be like hey is it okay if i post my stuff up there that's what i did i went to um whenever i would post my videos to reddit i would message the moderators be like hey are you guys okay with me posting my videos to reddit and they would be like yeah that's totally fine and then i was like here's all my videos nerds well i already ever put up the my best ones the ones i thought were really really good oh, okay okay 
Interesting. Interesting. I'm going to try to keep that in mind. Uh, thank you for the insight over there. I read it. Uh, we'll need some pictures coming up from CPL. I'm not sure if you saw our uh, screenshot channel, but we do have quite a few uh, interesting uh, screenshots to share. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah. we just need to find somebody that uh, can actually put them there and spend that time. I think a couple of things that would be really fun to post on the Save subreddit might actually be um, uh, some shorts of people getting nuked, like big armies killing each other and <laughs> stuff like that. You could that would be a good thing to put up there. Like people reacting to getting nuked is always a good good vibe. Yeah. Oh man, is Canada gonna actually take over Can Kakwana? Because this is this is a horse that can be attacked by two archers. Uh oh. Even I have a archers, feeling. I oh man, <laughs> that horse is gonna trample just barely. I think it's gonna trample that city. Oh Very nice. man, such a close call! Such a close call, dude. He captured well, that, that city by the skin of his hooves. Yeah, that is why he's called the Bunny Master. <laughs> <laughs> We do have an oracle coming up from Montreal, and I do see uh, Bigala establishing in Montreal as well. He's trying to get another horse out, probably to deal with that um, Australian uh, scout. Yeah, very that little Australian... cheeky Australian scout whooping in there, yeah. rustling up some sheep, running away with his cattle. He has yoinked a chunk of faith from that, and he's defending that holy site very well. I also noticed we got uh, those uh, theater squares coming up uh, from uh, Montreal and Ottawa. Let's actually take a look here. 5.7 great writer points a turn, but look at Gris go on 14.9. He's doing the projects. He's uh, trying to deny this as uh, much as possible. And uh, of course, we do see uh, Acropolis is full of books at the moment. Yeah, 14.9 uh, great writer points per turn is an insane amount. He's going to generate Wait, a great writer... What is happening? How 97 culture? <laughs> yeah, 97 culture, turn 41. Noob is 25 science only. But he keeps on doing the culture. Oh my god. And you remember, he was the one making the sacrifice for Temple of Artemis and then caught up to do this. That is absurdity. Where is he getting all that culture from? Uh, it's, it's his Acropolis, I guess, projects, uh, books. And so on. Uh, pyramids got pyramids in Olympia. These are very good Acropolises. This is a plus four. We got another plus four here. Now we got a plus two here, plus two here. Uh, gonna get a plus three soon. Does uh, he have suzerainty with... of some of those uh, cultural city states? That's crazy. Uh, that's a good question, actually. Tadrak looks like uh, has Namadol. Uh, Antanarivo, no, no, no. They're actually fighting, I think, for Namadol. Uh, Pulp is uh, five points in there. She wants that city. And no, he actually didn't use his uh, envoys for the culture once. He went for Johannesburg. Where in the name of Christ is he getting all that culture? What is happening? He's up to 106. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. 106. Amazing. And of course, uh, Wilfred Laurier will need to catch up. He does have, I gotta say, this is uh, sometimes what's happening because you do end up um, putting... A much wider empire and because you went for those uh, extra settlers uh, the production that you could have spent into those um, amphitheaters and so on uh, is just not there for sure for sure definitely um, looks like the oracle is coming up uh, has the oracle been changed in this mod what is the significance of the oracle uh, oracle first of all it does give you two points um, of great people to each city, you know, each type of district that you have in that city center. The the biggest thing is not actually Oracle itself. It's more when you couple it with Pingala, uh, because Pingala you can double it. You can use the hundred uh, percent great people points generated per turn in the city. So immediately you get six points from just one single district. Ooh, that is incredibly powerful. Yeah, I could definitely yeah. see why that's so useful because th that's like a single city is then cranking out as if it was like three or four in terms of great people points. Yeah, and then you have to be careful what kind of districts you build in uh, the cities and the city you got that in. So, for example, industrial zones, much, um, commercials are extremely valuable, not only the uh, theater square itself. The, the biggest bummer is the musicians you don't actually get the musician points um, oh you don't get the musician points oh yeah that's a bit right. of a and yeah until you get i think you get it at um uh very later on in the game broadcast centers that's very late very late even so you're still getting a ton of points from it um yeah so 
how do we compare Canada and Pericles' sim here? Canada's on 42, 43 culture, Pericles is on 116. And these are like comparable players. Both of them are going to be the cultural powerhouse here. Is yeah. this just Pericles being Pericles? Is Canada sim better in another way? Like what's going on here? I think the production later on will be with Canada. And the biggest thing is uh, no, of course, we'll have the advantage from um, choosing those city states and getting the plus five culture. I think he's going to be more favored towards uh, more culture. Uh, it's just Canada will have insane amounts of tourists when he's going to get his national parks. And Canada is not really well known for early uh, culture or tourism it's more the mid to late game that he's uh, starting to shine uh, it's Canada like the late game explosion right yeah exactly uh, especially when he's going to get his ice hockey rings the unique improvement it's going to be plus six tiles from each city that's two four six eight uh, or plus six <laughs> you know it's amazing yeah, six culture yeah. per city is really huge, especially because that gets converted into tourism. And I'm pretty sure yeah. the ice hockey ring, it gives you other advantages, right? Uh, that's a good question. Actually, usually I only think about it like that. Uh, let's see. One amenity. Yes, you do get an extra amenity. Yeah, plus one amenity. That is really, really nice. It's only one per city, though. That's a bit of a bummer, but it is what it is. And uh, you do get 100% tourism from uh, culture. So Im immediately those will give you that uh, also. So you got eight cities, what? That's a 48 culture, 48 uh, tourism as well. Yeah, that's like having fully built Renaissance walls for free, you know? Like yeah. For, for, for a single build charge. That's an insane amount of value. Yeah. And he's going to have so many cities here. Uh, compared to Pericles that is starting to run out of land. And we're going to need to see how he's going to try to do this. But you see how he's carefully staying away from uh, Chinese coast <laughs> to the south. He doesn't want to give uh, China away uh, to take his cities out. And looking at um, the south, Mapuche also doesn't uh, have any kind of interest to go on this coast and start up a naval war. No, oh, and I, I can totally China. understand them because fighting on the sea is really annoying. Yeah, I see China here getting those settlers out. One, two, three, four. Uh, and I believe uh, he didn't manage to get shipbuilding. Uh, we're probably going to see them uh, try to go southwest and northwest, uh, get uh, closer, uh, get a lot more cities out, which is going to be nice. He needs, he needs a lot more cities. Uh, this is exactly what we've seen yesterday from Japan. You remember when Japan tried to slow down and then try to catch back up but he never did i'm curious if uh Kublai is going to manage to catch back up yeah it's interesting i mean look his economy is pretty strong and i think Ooh. with an explosion of settlers he could make it work i mean look at that gold income yeah he's on 85 gold a turn this is unbelievable but uh, oh my god look at look at pulp go we're, we're about to see Cartography in two turns, Marsan is in two turns. This is again turn 46 cartography from one. But the, the problem here is, and he sh she shouldn't uh, go for the cartography, she doesn't have pre builds. And without pre builds, it's going to be insanely long to actually get your uh, boats up. So I, I think uh, she's either going to need to make a choice of um, starting up uh, galleys from each of her coastal cities or uh, totally give up on. Um, Attacking, attacking her opponent at caravel timing. Well, I know this might sound like an insane idea, but what if... Sh okay. What if Pulp is going to go for frigates and Synth will go for the caravels? That way they split the responsibility. I know that sounds like an insane thing. Yeah, Synth, yeah, yeah. You know, has a lot yeah, of galleys yeah, yeah. out. Pulp seems to be just barreling straight through cartography without a care in the world. I think we might see some sort of cross-pollinational play or they're only letting England commit to the sea yeah i i really like that by the way i usually uh, say that uh, a lot of the times i would love to see when players uh, do commit to one unit and the other player goes for another unit and they try to synergize somehow um the main issue here would be again pre-built i'm i'm at a loss when i see synth doesn't have enough pre builds she does have a decent amount of science, but not nearly enough as Pulp. Yeah, she's going to get boosted, but I think she already got a boost because she has two harbors. So, yeah, uh, I mean, it's a decent amount of harbors, and she is working on those great admirals, but 
I, it doesn't look like they're gearing up for a caravel push. And the question is, is Eleanor gearing up for a caravel push? Eleanor? No. They're just fighting for how many animals they can get. Interesting. You, you see them doing the harbor shipping project. This is actually quite uh, sad to see, I gotta say. <laughs> I was so excited to see a naval warfare, trying to uh, seeing them poke each other uh, at some point here. And I guess we're going to see a much longer uh, game started up. And I, I got to point out, this is not the best timing for either of them. You know, the time is taking for the next era. And I'm oh, pretty yeah, sure, uh, sure everybody wants their golden age points. So they're... they're even delaying this attack even though they could have had it it's just yeah not gonna happen wait yeah, the, it looks the like biggest everyone thing is scrambling is... for error score uh, what, what's the biggest thing sorry oh man okay so this is not gonna happen uh pulp just finished cartography and she got mercenaries so this this is this is not gonna happen she has like three galleys in total she's not gonna be able to build somewhere maybe she totally forgot about this like mean, there is a possibility you have so many things to do uh maybe she did forget that uh, she could have had uh, wow well, she what? has three caravels that was if two she's gonna... was that the boost for um the government uh what the tier two government if you build two caravels i think you get a boost for oh oh, oh the merchant republic yes yeah, I wonder if she was just getting that to boost uh, uh, exploration for her team. That's a good question. I have no well, idea. The I'm at a loss at the moment. Weird. I'm... Very weird. Yes. Because like, by the time those caravels actually get to Uralfish, Uralfish is going to get uh, his own caravels going. This is, this is a long way to go. And if you don't go with uh, as many as you can, uh, I don't think he she's going to have any kind of chance of success on this side you see oral fish going for uh, pre-builds he is getting more uh, more galleys out and he's going to be prepared for a counter-attack i wonder if this is a case of oral fish like being like okay i know they're going to caravel rush me i need to have pre-builds i need to be ready and then the caravel rush never comes and then oral fish is just like well to hell with this i'm going to drive my caravels over to them <laughs> yeah well, uh, we got a comment over here from Mamaleto. By the way, he was uh, playing yesterday with the uh, Ottomans. Uh, he's uh, telling us that uh, this might be uh, because they're happy to fight at, at the later stage. They they know they will probably have more stats than uh, their opponents in the later stage. So might as well uh, just delay this and don't commit to this. Oh, Which, I'm kind of worried okay, about that sure. now because they might have mispredicted the pre-builds because it does look like Eleanor is, like we were saying, pre-building a lot of galleys. This... Yeah might end up being it was a good six it's a good call but maybe a bad outcome for them potentially down the line yeah i think they had a really good chance of taking out total fish and this would have totally changed up the dynamic of the game if they do man so the the thing is let's take a look at how the power projection is uh if you do get the seas if you do win the seas yes of course uh, at some kind of a sacrifice you do take out uh england which is um gold powerhouse here he's making 70 gold a turn you take out phoenicia's ability to trade on the seas at the same time uh, and you also uh, give pericles an opportunity to take out the land uh, cities of phoenicia because he's going to lose three cities here and then he's going to remain on two this, these are going to be easy to take out so basically winning the seas gives you an opportunity to take out your opponent uh to uh, take out two of your opponents if you also look at the south we got canada with one city on the coast so that means um he is not he's gonna not be that um faced by this but at the same time going for a culture victory in a four versus two situation is almost impossible so i'm not i'm not sure why they didn't commit to this Maybe the goal situation wasn't that great, but honestly, they had a good in income. Um, I, I'm honestly not sure. You oh, know, well, I think it is what it is. We're going to have to see. It, I, it's, it is going to be a longer game, so we're happy about this. I'm just, uh, you know, thinking of the strategy of this. Yeah, for sure. I, it could be a case of where maybe they just feel really confident in their late game. And they're like, you know what, guys, if they're not going to fight us in the mid game, we'll take it to the late game. We know we can beat them. We know we can do it. And I think that maybe it's just the confidence of the players that they just feel like they know the game so well that they can duke it out in the late game uh, i did have one question oh no um oh nope i forgot it never mind uh 
how is Canada's sim coming along? Well, he did manage to snatch that uh, Oracle. So now he's starting up uh, to make, let's see, 11.5 great writer points a turn while Gris is on 13. Uh, he's starting to catch back up. I'm not so certain if he actually managed to double Pingala, but I think so. He only has a few theater squares and this might hurt him in the long run. Uh, if we take a look at the great people in the great writer screen, we have... So it, it's quite important to actually get uh, the early writers, the cheap ones. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, we got Greece getting two, Canada getting one, Greece getting three, four. Okay, so Greece got four, Canada got one. That's the reason uh, Greece does manage to make so much culture so early. Wait. Turn 48, 200 culture? No. <laughs> I, okay, somebody needs to oh. go check on Noob's computer. I'm pretty sure he's hacking the game right now. There's no way he should have 200 uh -oh, culture uh -oh. on this many cities. Moderators, moderators. Yeah, we're going to have to get some what admin action here. Man, I think man. Noob is actually cheating. White flag, white flag. Put the white flag, man. <laughs> this is, wow. Okay, unbelievable, man. Noob 634 is putting so many breaks on this uh, culture victory. He's... Um, uh, the news has just come in from our maths department. We have counted up all of Suomi's culture and Noob is in fact making more culture than the entire enemy team. <laughs> and he has the production to work with, 104 production. We got uh, Pupu Mestari on 109. Oh my god, that's unbelievable. He did manage to get Colosseum, by the way, from Athens. And even in, with this awkward land, he's still making it this uh, work. Uh, non freshwater cities uh, here and there. We got him uh, getting more settlers out, and I do see him expanding towards the east side. Amazing place coming out from Noob64. I don't know where he's getting all this production from. I don't know where he's getting all this culture from. He seems to be, he's a wizard. He's, he's conjuring it out of thin air. Incredible. Uh, yeah, it's I, I love this Artemis into mass settlement into Colosseum build. It just seems, God, this is what I love to see. I love to see players playing at their best and just really pushing this game to its limits. Yeah, and then on the other side we got Paul, 115 science with 71 culture. This is this is like pre 1050 at the moment. It <clears throat> barely got her harbors out. Yeah, I've never seen Sim numbers like this before in a game of Civ. These are unheard of, at least in my experience. This is insane. They're just the, the efficiency that these players are displaying right now. Yeah, uh, we got a question here if I can actually see all of his books. I think I can only take a look at uh, the drop down menu here. I can't actually open up his um, work screen. So let's see, Acropolis. Oh, he doubled his Acropolis. That's why he's using the double card. Okay, I see you. two books here. Uh, two books here. Another one book here. And, oh, he gave a book away or something? No, another two books here. Okay. Yeah, okay. That amphitheater sure. is still under construction, I think. Yeah, it's still under construction, yeah. Uh, and I see uh, Entertainment Complex, he did use the Entertainment Complex for some extra adjacency towards his uh, Acropolis. That's a plus 12 and a plus 10. Ooh, yeah, you love to see that sort of stuff. I also, I'm really yeah. enjoying just how many cities he's going for. This is the way Civ was meant to be played, at least Civ 6, right? You settle your cities, yeah. you make a few districts, and then you gobble up the world. This is what I've been telling players for a long then, time boom, in single explode. player. Yeah. If you don't have 20 cities, you're a loser. And I'm, I'm hoping Noob hits that 20 city number this game. I hope so too. And this is going to be such a painful uh, development for Canada though. Uh, Canada here is going to try to do his best to catch back up and uh, attack on that uh, culture victory. We do have him putting down his industrial zone. He's getting his uh, Grandmaster Chapel. He is generating 146 uh, faith a turn. So uh, all in all, he has a lot more uh, production to work with uh, than Noob 634 uh, because of that faith uh, translating into production somehow. Yeah, I've, like, never, uh, I've never seen such a holy Canada just pumping out that faith. Uh, it's, it's genuinely impressive. And look at that growth as well on the cities with Feed the World just skyrocketing the population. Actually, can we compare yeah. his population to other players? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, sure. He had 11 pop, 10 pop, and then we got uh, Beijing 8 pop, 7 pop. Uh, looks like uh, Tyre does have uh, about the same numbers, but he has a uh, 5 to one fish style to work with. Uh, he's on 9 and uh, 6. Wow, Pericles that... is on 9 as well. Uh, Temple of Artemis here showing up for him and giving that uh, nice boost. 
Yeah, I mean, think of it like, oh yeah, he's so far ahead in population. Most yeah, people are yeah. sitting around seven, eight, nine. Well, in Hobart, it's crazy because of the food thing. Um, oh, Jock is. <laughs> I think Jock has got <laughs> swiped, and I wonder. Yeah, let's see. Jokis is a uh, Kublai China. He lo- who, what wonder did he lose? It looks like it was uh, a wonder on the river there. You can see the circle where the wonder was built. Uh, that's got to be something like Great Bath or something, right? Oh, it says uh, Hanging Gardens, I think. But it, I don't know how it actually ends up over here. There are two things under construction on the same. Yeah, it looks like he was... <laughs> <laughs> how is this possible? <laughs> It looks like he was building the Hanging Gardens and now it's gone. Yeah. I wonder who managed to snatch that up because I think that was for Aeroscore, right? We must be coming to the end of this era and people are s- scrambling for Aeroscore. Uh, yes, yes. Oh, look at the English fleet. Oh my God. Okay, we got Eleanor here just booming. We got a few um, boats coming up from Australia. One thing that I also want to point out with uh, this amount of culture, Australia can go for exploration. That means uh, she's going to have press gangs. Uh, that means uh, she will get to uh, build, hard build those uh, carnivals. Uh, this is the um, result of uh, her going wide, wider than usual. Uh, how, of course, is a big difference. Uh, this is a big difference between uh, staying on three, four cities and going for this. Three, four cities, you just don't have the culture to go for um, uh, cartogra- uh, f- to go for uh, Merchant Republic. Uh, she did have the culture with this setup. So now I think even if she's going to end up seeing what's going on here on England, uh, even if uh, she's going to manage to get a few units away from England, she's going to be pushed back. She's going to need to start up uh, those printing presses on her um, boats. This is going to be quite uh, interesting to see what's going to happen here. It's starting. It's starting. Una Fish was ready for this attack. Yeah, that's it. Eleanor playing the reverse Uno card. Rather than getting a Carval rushed, she herself will now be Carval rushing the other players. Yeah, I, I'm actually very, very surprised um, that Paul went for this uh, poking uh, for England. I guess you can imagine if uh, Australia had eight boats here or 10 boats here, all of these galleys in the next two turns would have been taken out. Yeah, for sure. This poking attack, uh, you know what it feels like? It feels like you're showing your hand in poker, that you're showing off that you only have three caravels. And now Eleanor knows, well, if you only have three caravels, I have about 20 pre-builds. I just need to light the ignition uh, and I can just burst out of my base and come straight at you. I know these are some of the best players ever, but I feel like I feel like she's poked the bear. She did. And Ural Fish yesterday, you've seen him play with Victoria. He did amazing. Uh, The only thing I have to uh, say about him, he was a bit complacent at the end there. I think he lost focus and uh, I think he would have lost his series to Egypt, which was such a surprise if the game would have played on for another 15 turns. Oh, my God. Yeah, that would have been amazing. Yeah. Egypt, that game was absolutely massive um and you know you can't blame <laughs> players for losing their concentration a game of save goes on for hours like i think we're we're about an hour into this game for 50 turns in after an hour and these players are already starting to gear up for some action yeah and this is exactly the um, um the differences that i liked uh, between this game and other games um in a sieve your preparation your um way of thinking your uh, way of placing everything does matter so much in the long term and it does make such a big difference when you're actually going to start um, uh, warring with another player which means uh, all of like you have all of the little details to talk about versus uh, when you talk about a game like starcraft or when you talk about a game like let's say dune two, two different uh, types of uh, approaches to warfare uh, it, it feels like all of those little details um, sure matter but not as much as the death ball matters if you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I mean, like, even though I was, you know, I was giving Poop a little bit of criticism for doing this poking attack, but she is getting galley kills. Like, she's knocking them down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, uh, the only thing missing here is the production. She's only on 102. And what, um, I think Eleanor does know uh, she's, uh, he's not going to have that much production. So 67 uh, production, he's going to try to put into pre-builds. Uh, the second he discovers cartography, this is going to be over for him. So he needs to upgrade as many caravels and then hope for the best because he's definitely going to have, uh, he's going to be outproduced here. 
Yeah, for sure. And I, I, you know, I wonder if this little bit of a poking attack is kind of a, a dominance display here from Poop, knowing that you you can't come back and attack me fast enough because their team sim is starting to get completely out of control. Pericles is up to 250 culture, almost 260 culture. Poop almost up to 150 science. It feels like every single one of their players just has an empire that could rival two enemy cities. Yeah. That that science coming up from Pulp is gonna be scary. Two hundred fifty eight culture on Noob. That that's just I I have no answer to that at the moment. And I I guess that is Pericles being Pericles at the end of the day. Yeah, uh, I definitely do... I definitely feel like I have the perfect answer to it, Michael. Do you want to know what it is? Yes, please. please. <laughs> Ban Pericles at the, in the lobby. <laughs> 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 yeah, Ben Pericles, indeed. Well, the, the thing, the good thing for them, Pericles is only 44 science, <laughs> you know, at least that. But he's going to have, oh, oh, wait, Ooh, Mapuche, Mapuche, what is, what is Chuck doing? Are we going to oh, see Malon Readers this game? Wait, really? I'm genuinely oh my God. shocked. He's actually going to go. So Manamadol here is getting defended. Fonisha is uh, keeping uh, Namadol intact, I think. Uh, well, let me see. Because I know, oh, she, Pulp got it. That's why she wants to take it away from Pulp. That's why Pulp did manage to get that much culture. Now Madol, oh. I know they were fighting with each other. Tadrak was trying to keep it, but then, yeah, Pulp got it. I mean, these reinforcing uh, cavalry coming in from Lautaro, that should be enough to keep Nan Madol alive and keep that massive culture gain on Australia. What I love is if you look at Nan Madol, look how fat its borders is. That's how you can tell people have been fighting over it with envoys. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So big, so big. It's under siege now, and we might actually uh, see it defend here. I do notice it's very hard to go from across the river into it. But and of course, uh, Greece over here already has a few horses. I'm um, pretty sure Czech is gonna defend it. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I do have to point out major upgrades here heard over here on the city of london we got so many cannibals now started up and they are quite strong they have a plus five from a great admiral uh, they do have um uh, the oligarchy bonus and the alliance bonus so uh, we do have them on 71 against that cannibal 64 from uh from australia she does have rahendra cola uh, with her and she also has uh oh wait she doesn't have oligarchy oh 71 combat strength is massive. Wait, oh. no oligarchy bonus? Wait, no, I did see oligarchy. Yeah, no. No oligarchy. Yeah, there's, there's no oligarchy here. That's why she's like, oh my God. No, no, there it is. There it is. No. Four strength Wait, from oligarchy. No, no. That's, that's from the other. That's England. Oh, oh, sorry. You're right. Oh my God. Yeah. That's, she doesn't have it. This is going to be massive. Like She needs to do something to equa equate that uh, bonus. Uh, of course, numbers would be a some form of an answer here but she's not doing it she's getting theater squares she's getting shipyards and we found out where hanging gardens have been built in the city of hobart <laughs> okay yeah there we that's go. insane i will point out though that that massive caravel army was spawned in uh, 350 bc definitely uh, a little <laughs> bit before its time jesus hasn't even been born in this universe um one <laughs> question i have is it does kind of look like synth is pre-building her own galleys now to maybe prepare for a counter-attack and defend against this uh i see the, i see synth actually yeah just wondering those uh, galleys it looks like uh, she did manage to put away uh, discovering uh, cartography that's the correct way of doing things she needs to uh, build pre-build as many boats as possible they do have the gold to work with uh 148 gold 122 66 91 so that's not a problem and uh, they can uh, definitely upgrade as many as possible and now Madol got defeated by the way it wasn't enough for mapuche to um, walk in yeah, just a turn or two too late there. And Namadol yeah. is paying the price. Just a scrap of rubble on the ground there where its ancient walls used to be. Um, I have to say, Suomi must be very happy with themselves to take that city-state away from Pulp, who is benefiting from it massively. And it looks like we do have uh, Pulp dropping down around 23 culture. That is quite quite a problem there. 20% yeah, sure. culture. Amazing. I mean that slack is going to have to be picked up by the rest of uh, rest of her team. Get the biggest thing going. here, the more culture Noob is going to make, the harder it will be for uh, Canada to go for. He's already putting forty five defenders, and we're ten fifty four. 
Yeah, that's almost a defender at third. Okay. <laughs> yes, I, it's amazing. You have to start feeling a little bit bad for Canada here. You get like the absolute god roll. You get all the tundra. You get all the deer. You get your pantheon. You get everything. And then in comes Greece. Steals your Temple of Artemis. Makes 400 yeah. million culture. And completely does everything in their power to block your culture win. It's got to feel yeah. pretty annoying. I do have to point out we got more theater squares coming up here. I do like uh, the science output by these campuses. There's just not that many of them. Uh, I do see also Mondrian and Ottawa are setting up a very good industrial zone. It's a plus three right now with another four coming up, uh, five actually coming up from these uh, two uh, aqueducts. Uh, so uh, again, massive. Uh, he's uh, already starting up his industrial uh, great engineers. He's on six, immediately six uh, great engineer points a turn. So he does have the double. Jesus, yeah, it's, it's more of a years. yeah, it's more of a problem with uh, okay, how many theater squares he has, uh, how much um, uh, production he's gonna have to go into the next part of the game. But it looks like a uh, noob sixty four is outmatching him when it comes to the defense. And looking at the long term gameplay, it's gonna be um, if there will be a culture. Uh, quote unquote uh, victory uh, tryout. Unfortunately, we're going to see it uh, arrive at maybe 115, 120, or even later, which is very late. Very late. Uh, uh, so many things can happen between now and then. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, you just, to put that into context, it took us one hour to get from turn one to turn 50, and it's taken us 15 minutes to get from turn 50 to for turn 55. This game is going to start to slow down. It's going to start to solidify as the battle lines are drawn and as the engines are built and they push towards the late game. Um, I do think we could still see a culture victory, but it'll have to be quite late when Canada does their um, national park explosion with the Mounties. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what do you think is the biggest threat to Canada's ability to get into that late game? Because nobody is nearby them. Nobody's going to attack them. Do you think that he's got free sim and it's just going to be a, a matter of him just powering hard while his allies fight on the front line? I think it's all about Eleanor. If Eleanor manages to defend, uh, he's going to get to sim. He's going to try his way towards the culture victory. If Eleanor doesn't manage to defend, uh, he's going to get nuked well before he's going to get the culture victory like uh, at this point i don't think there's a question about it uh i think nukes come much faster than his culture victory but again yeah, i may true. be wrong because uh casino style he, he has a lot of faith to work with so um rock pants might be a thing he we're going to, need to see if he has uh, somebody sending him uh, a good land to play those rock pants in that's true. I mean, there is a lot of potential here for a lot of different ways to win, especially um, these players are incredibly good, so they can oftentimes pull out surprises and, and abilities. You know, you stop looking at someone for 15 minutes and suddenly, are, you know, their culture is over 330. Where is... Okay, there's no way this is legitimate. How does he have 330 culture? I just... I, I, I'm, I'm genuinely shocked. I need to, like, talk to Noob and ask him, what the hell is he doing different in, in compared to yeah. my games? Because that is just absurdity. Is he, is he being fee, being fed gold? Like, how is he doing it? Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure he has a Vilnius, a few, yeah, uh, only one. Okay, he has only one in there, Antanarivo. Does he have one? No, he doesn't. Well, nobody has in Antanarivo. Okay, that's interesting. Um, there was Acropolis early on, very good adjacency. He did uh, put down uh, entertainment complexes next to his Acropolis. And so he has um, uh, the double card also in there. Uh, Moksha giving him in the capital. Um, the books are extremely important. Just the books, I think, give him like half of this. Well, not half, around 100 coming up. Yeah, it's interesting. So um, what, four, a book or something? Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Well, one question I had is, um, could we see a, a sort of dodge victory, something like a diplomatic win? Has anybody built a Patala Palace? You know, could we see an early... Um, Good question. Uh, what's the name of that? God damn. So Diplo Victory is activated. I think uh, in the That's 4v4s, you, you we okay. should have uh, Diplo Victory activated. Uh, I don't see a reason why not. Uh, Statue of Liberty is a bit uh, early. I think only Noob can actually build it. You, you do get it at uh, Civil Engineering. It's uh, quite late in the tree. It's uh, let's see over yeah, here, yeah, right? Civil Engineering. Is. Yeah, I'm just I'm curious if we might see stuff like that. Uh, it does look like Eleanor is moving her fleets across the ocean towards Australia and England. 
Yeah. We got little fish moving. Oh, and uh, Cynthia percent. has been staying here with her settler for some time now. I'm not sure what she is waiting for. She's going for mass production diplomatic uh, um, service. And from what I can see, she keeps on building these galleys. That's good. I mean, she's going to have a lot of galleys to work with. Uh, they do have the goal to upgrade her. And uh, she does have uh, mercenaries. She's on 100 science. Now, again, again, good strategies from her but uh, looking at um, what's going on here we might actually see England uh, Eleanor managed to snatch that settler before she actually manages to settle it I think she was trying to go for um, a city over here on the right style and get a connection uh, a way to upgrade her boats on the way towards England yeah Instead that of, actually uh, makes sense or the settler yeah. is being used like a fortress right where you could yeah exactly units. yeah interesting but it it might backfire because Ural Flish is not staying in his own territory. He's actually pushing out. Yeah, it might be a we'll little see. bit of a misprediction, miscommunication. That settler might be captured and used against Synth. Um, that's actually what I kind of expect to happen here. Um, is she even oh, going? What's up? One other uh, little detail here. Um, Noob64 has been in uh, double Pembrush and Voices, so he's getting a lot of culture from those uh, as the, uh, from those districts as well. Um, we do have Pupu Mestari in a monumentality for two eras, so he's uh, he keeps on simming, he keeps on expanding here. That uh, doesn't have the extra culture coming up from those. But he did manage to arrive at 88 culture and 61 uh, science. I mean, uh, 88 Tadrak. culture is a huge amount for this area er, er, of the game. Only really Greece can get yeah. higher than that. The the biggest thing here is Tadrak not actually getting big, not not actually mm. getting a lot of cities, and this is quite uh, disturbing. Uh, neither did uh, Eleanor. Uralfish uh, stopped seeming at some point, and uh, this is going to hurt them a lot in the next uh, 40 turns. Because their, their opponents are just getting so many other cities. And yes, they might be on the same power level. But then in the next uh, part, part of the game, when those cities, those extra cities start to um, be fruitful, uh, that's just going to be way too much for them to handle. Yeah, it's, it's genuinely surprising to see how few cities there are in this game, considering how much open land there is. Um, some people staying on five cities. It really doesn't feel like five cities cuts the mustard anymore yeah it, it doesn't it, it's especially on these big maps like like seven seas highlands it, it just doesn't you need to go wide and you, greece like the, the, the biggest example is greece look at him go he always has somewhere a settler going somewhere look, even now he has a settler going somewhere <laughs> he has two four six eight ten cities and he's still expanding yeah, I mean, it just really does feel like the more cities you can get, the better your empire is. So I'm always, I would love to know what these players are thinking when they decide to keep their empires, you know, not small, but they stop expanding. What is the decision? Is it a, a decision of necessity? Like you just don't have the production, you just don't have the time. Um, like what's happening there? Uh, very good question. Sometimes land quality makes uh, the choice for you, as in you just don't have where to settle because of land. But I don't think this was uh, the choice here. Uh, it was a bit awkward, for example, even for China to go for uh, these other cities, but now he got them. Uh, I think the same could have been happening for Phoenicia, even if he got a few land cities, it still should have gone for them. Uh, especially in the south, especially on the northwestern coast and so on. Like e every little bit of land that he could settle, he should have settled. One yeah, extra Cothon is massive. And you build the Cothon uh, half cost. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm, I'm quite surprised. Like Dido especially. Dido to me is a sieve that is just like, how many settlers can I get away with? Like that's her number one question. She just yeah. loves building a massive empire. Yeah, yeah. We do have Tadrak in a free inquiry golden age. Uh, Uralfish did go dark age and he might actually use his dark age. Uh, uh oh. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. The settler. Oh no, the settler is exposed. Yeah, she, she's going to shift enter. No, she's going to shift enter it away. I'm actually curious if Ural Fish is gonna get there uh, faster, but it looks like he's trying. He's trying to. He's trying to shift enter there. Let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Too very, late. very fast reactions. Oh, oh got oh. it. Got the settler. Okay. Unlucky timing for Synth. Yeah. 
Wait, well, she's she, more turned uh, away from cartography? No, 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 sorry. She's researched it. This is her being, again, a bit complacent and too confident about uh, her opponent, about their advantage against uh, their opponents. Ural Fischer, it doesn't look like uh, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's, he knows what he's doing. He's preparing for a two, this two versus one. He got the scaravels, he has uh, pre-builds coming up for the frigates. It's just a matter of uh, being outmatched over here in the science and in the culture because Australia being Australia. You know, let's just look at Australia go. Australia will have some marines in the water soon. <laughs> yes, for sure. But I mean, is it too little too late? I mean, look at all those juicy trade routes that are just wide open for those English caravels to sweep through and eat yeah. up. Um, uh, yeah, it does feel like this is just a little bit of complacency that they just did not respect their opponent, that they were a few turns behind where they thought they would be. Yep. I'm, I do have to point out, I did uh, say about, um, how to say, uh, privateers going into those uh, submarines. It's going to take a long time to get submarines here. And don't expect them in the next uh, 10 to 15 times. Uh, it, it's just, it was funny for me to say, uh, it felt funny for me to say that. Privateers are still going to be amazing. Uh, they do deal a significant amount of damage from afar and uh, you can't really see them. That's uh, quite an advantage. And this is, uh, by the looks of it, um, we do have exactly what you are saying. Uh, Pulp is uh, trying to get ranged units and we do have a synth going for the mini, for the caravels. Yeah, I thought that might be an interesting thing to do. One player rushes one type of unit, another player rushes another. And it seems like they had similar ideas. Um, although I wonder if this is Pulp just picking a unit that is very good at fighting above its weight class uh, because of this massive swarm of caravels that are on the way. Yeah. Well, Ural Fish needs to get those uh, boats back, though. Definitely needs to get those boats back. Oh, we got a raid here. Papa, chilling. Just join the stream. I, we do give, need to give a big shout out to this guy. Papa, chilling. Yesterday was the one defending with Kree in that corner against the massive armies of Mamaleto of Ottomans. Man, thank you so much. It was was quite a game yesterday. Quite a game yesterday. Yeah, Papa Chillin, you did an amazing job holding off those Janissaries for so long. I was genuinely worried for you kind of early in the game, but then you turned it around and I was like, oh, okay, I'm really, really enjoying your play. So thank you so much for letting us watch you play yesterday. Now we do see the two English fleets have started uh, bonking each other. Uh, one fish over here will need to um, get the defense on that uh, setter and then uh, move it back. We do have uh, Synth uh, trying to poke a little bit of the um, uh, English uh, caravels. He, she did not manage to take one down, and it looks like that one actually didn't get enough promotions. He's missing one point. Oh my god, of experience to get a promotion. Yep, that's incredibly awkward. Incredibly, yeah. incredibly awkward. And Synth seems to be defending this quite well. Not many trade routes are exposed. She does have what looks to be a caravel uh, fleet. That is going to make her life a little bit easier over here as well. Yeah. But the science, though, on Pulp is just, wow. Okay. It's starting to run away with the production as well. Getting those uh, shipyards in the harbors. We got uh, three of them at the count being built. Four of them actually being built. Uh, can't really use Sydney to get out units, though. This is a, a bit awkward, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, it's always have... um, it's always unfortunate when you don't have really good coastal yeah. cities, but you still have like lots of cities with harbors and stuff like that. It can be annoying. Yeah, I really like, by the way, Pupu Mustari just got two hundred twelve production, one hundred seventy two uh, faith. She he did go for over a hundred of culture, one hundred eighteen, and he's on uh, eighty one science. Uh, starting to get more campuses going. Start to started to get that production going from his uh, industrial zone. A plus nine in the city of Montreal, uh, and Ottawa is gonna get another one over here at plus six. Yeah, it's so incredible. The, he's also setting up that uh, industrialization. The, um, uh, factory will give bonuses to all of the cities uh, around this uh, in six tiles away. That's that's going to be massive. Uh, the, the biggest thing is just Noob 64. Like, I, I watched that. Okay, so Pupu Mestari got a bit of production and then boom, I watched Noob 64 and he's on 476 culture. Man, this is just... <laughs> oh my God. You know? That is this insanity. Is, is there a retirability? over here like when you see these numbers what are you gonna do just 
<laughs> you know, I, know you, I know what I would do. I would just alt F4 out of the game and go back to bed, dude. I'm done. If I'm playing against a Greece that has 500 culture and turns 60, I'm out. Oh, oh my god! You're going to, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's exactly what's going on, right? You see those numbers, like how am I going to get the culture victory? <laughs> <laughs> now that right there, that's a clip you should post to Reddit. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable man unbelievable anyway so we do have zone of control managing to get the victory over suomi with an unbelievable um uh, culture coming up from <laughs> <laughs> oh my god man oh my god unbelievable unbelievable defense coming up from the uh, can we actually go and uh, talk with them let me actually see if uh, we can uh, we can jump in and channel there hell yeah let's go jump in let's do it let's have a chat with the teams uh yeah 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 let's see where they what are they are they in the same channel let me pull them in the same channel okay let's yeah go if you guys are wondering um one of the teams surrendered that's why uh the game is over yes Um, guys, sorry, hold on. I don't remember where the chat... Hold on, I'm looking. It cost you quite a bit. Oh, thank you yeah, for putting me in. I couldn't great. find the channel. Not okay, great. There we go. I pulled the potato with us uh, in the channel here. How's it going, guys? That was a fantastic game. Pause thank when you're finished. Uh... I mean, I guess it doesn't count, right? I have 872. I think there was a window they could have punished you for that, but they were focused on naval, which is lucky for you. <laughs> 872 culture potato. <laughs> you know what was funny? In the seconds we were saying that, we we just, I was asking potato, what is he going to do? <laughs> and then they cc <laughs> uh, Mr. Noob, how 800 culture? Oh. You tell me. Yeah, like end project running or what the fuck? I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least we waited for 1060 for your uh, chip or the thingy. I suppose that's in the lead. I guess it doesn't count. You guys left one turn before. Did we? Oh, yeah. No, Wait. it's uh, two, no, I don't it's, know. It's, it's, it's unclear. Right. Okay, you're, you're still in the game, so it counts, right? You're playing a 1v4. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to give it to you. Same time. Okay. Yeah, we. There's no. Yeah, yeah. I think it counts. Should count, right? Big question of, Did you consider going for the caravel attack, or you just decided from the get go to not go for any kind of caravel pulp and uh, synth? Uh, yeah. I, I I try to do the achievement too on Caravels and with the Admiral. <laughs> I <laughs> did for turn 46. I don't know yeah. what about the rest. So I, I just... Uh, I mean, the goal was to make them use gold and uh, and take Caravels and then uh, let time to seem to rebuild a lot. Yep. When it's 2v2 on naval, it's the best to do. Interesting. Because yeah. I, I thought you were, you had made a mistake in revealing that you only had three caravels, but you were just like buying time. Interesting. That was, that's a way smarter than what I thought you were doing. She was trying to get to bait them into upgrading before they were ready and buy me like five or six more turns of them slash pre-build time. Okay, that's like a huge brain play. I super respect that. That was really, really well played because it worked pretty well, I would say. <laughs> I think I was definitely a few turns behind in the pre-build, but I was having a very, very lazy game. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. <laughs> oh, it's fine. And we got uh, Admirals. Uh, I mean, lucky, good for admirals. You, lucky for you, we played like shit, so... <laughs> <laughs> couldn't punish. 
Yeah, how, I, how you... I, I was like, I, I want any any admiral, I'm fine, and I I open the 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 great uh, person, and I see uh, Rajendra. So okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Why so, so few cities, many. though? Slow me. Why so few cities? I mean, we don't have land. We are on a, basically on an island. Well, you have land. What do you mean? Have you seen noob cities? Uh, no, we don't see a single city from here. They just settle cities for the sake of getting acropolises. Then non fresh water, a lot of them, you know, not, not great. Yeah, but that's. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, he's playing for the high culture number, so. Yeah. Yeah, I was quite surprised. Oh, I guess Kublai did have a problem because uh, you need a shipbuilding to expand, but. Uh, I didn't know why Phoenicia stayed on Fuse and Eleanor. I mean, I guess That's Eleanor had to had to go for the caravel fight, so he doesn't just die. Yeah. Was Kublai connected to RC? No. No, right? no, no. I'm a, I'm on a puddle here. Yeah, I see. Same yeah. with Phoenicia. Only three cities on the yeah. on that I coast. Mean, I mean, there's a canal possibility to connect to more, but that's yeah, but later on. Game. Mm. The game was already over. I yeah. don't like we don't we don't have any win condition here. Like, and just not enough science. And I missed the fucking golden on the on the slot order. Oh, you Wait. got screwed <laughs> on the hanging gardens, was it? Hanging gardens. I will have gotten a theater on that, and then I could have made a the. Mm was and everything I would have gotten enough points but losing seven points to slaughter already kinda of fucked me up. Ooh that's rough. Who scared you? Who did it? Did you consider <sighs> asking for a technical with the um, with Gambera right. getting that Yes. Uh, okay. But uh, well, what was the But uh, we had the uh, got the opportunity on the uh, noob to do the achievement and uh, the spawn overall was good. Okay. Canada so... spawn, by the way, was amazing. Oh uh, my god! Yeah, that so much, so much potential late game, but just Pericles, no, mm -hmm. just went crazy. <laughs> like a thousand culture coming up over here. Yes, I what mean, I I was the only one who was still willing to play, but uh, I got silenced. <laughs> but uh, I guess uh, eight hundred culture to the sixties is a bit much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is absurdity. Like, yeah, but how much? Does Noob have production? Like, is he really low on production? Nothing. No, his cities Nothing. are shit. Hey, they, they, you you <laughs> guys could have easily rolled him at any point in this game, I think. <laughs> yeah. From from the observer seat, he was like roughly on par with Canada, maybe like 30, 40 production behind. Yeah, well, that's quite a lot. Uh, well, yeah. Canada did have the faith. If you start adding that's up the true. faith, yeah, you add the faith, Canada that starts getting crazy. Yeah. Well, a GG well played. It was, was an awesome game to watch over here. So many achievements you got this game. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> and at least it wasn't a scrap fight like the other cast you did. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> I this mean, we had a few. <laughs> this was nice. <laughs> a few real obvious due to the remaps, but the other was pretty smooth. Yeah, yeah. Dude, yesterday's game went so long and was so difficult. Mm -hmm. I took a fucking nap, okay? That's how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Iron Man? <laughs> It was rough. Yeah, the item. I mean, well, it yeah. was. I mean, to to be fair, that was like the best game yesterday. If it went to the late game, it would have been explosive, amazing. So many, so many good players in the game, but then unfortunate with the disconnect. Yeah, once once the relobby was called around like six hours in, or, or maybe it was five hours in, then it was this relobby yeah. simulator for the next two hours. Yeah, one player disconnected and then every, everything messed up. He even disconnected manually. Everything got messed up. Oh, well, yeah, because yeah. his hotkeys didn't work or something and then that started it all. Yep, yeah, yeah. Yep. The uh, the next uh, item is, I understand, they're going to be six uh, team, six man team, uh, six man players. Yeah, they're that's not going to go 12 anymore. Yeah, since one of minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, we could catch one of those. What do you think, Potato? Yeah, sure, we could catch it. What is it? A six, uh, six man free for all Iron Man? Uh, yeah, or just a wait, regular free for all? 
you said it's in 20 minutes it's not in 20 minutes it's actually in two hours and 20 minutes it's the 2v2 round that's coming up in 20 minutes wait yeah oh yeah 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 I was just yeah. thinking about that. Sorry, sleep deprivation is kind of bad. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. You this are is a hard me. weekend for a lot of us. <laughs> but yeah, yeah Michael, I'm happy to catch whatever game you want to catch. Just let me know. I mean, uh, I guess uh, we're going to need to wait anyway for uh, any game. So we could just come back in a few hours and get, uh, get something to eat in the meantime. Yeah, that sounds great. I got lunch right before we cast it. I, I made that mistake yesterday of not having food in my belly. Um, <laughs> I was sitting there waiting for my lunch for the first two hours of the cast because for whatever reason, the restaurant I ordered from was like super busy. So it took a long time to get here. <clears throat> so I guess, wait, I, let, I did say yesterday. Let's let's ask the stream. Let's ask uh, everybody uh, on the stream. We can get a 2v2 going. And then, of course, uh, we can maybe see when we end up with a 2v2 and see what kind of games we have. Uh, should we wait for the Iron Man th that is going to be explosive in uh, two hours? Or should we go now in 20 minutes for a 2v2? That's the question. I mean, if you ask the people, they're always going to ask you for more content and say you should just jump right into a game. Oh wait, never mind. I don't know. My my stream is saying wait for Iron Man, what, and what, they're saying it? one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, listen, I need to practice before I one v one. Okay, I need to get coached by the best. Okay, it's, it's, my stream is actually saying Iron Man. They want the Iron Man. Yeah. Okay, we'll wait for the Iron Man. Wait for what, what's your stream saying? It's saying what? Uh, don't worry. My my stream is dumb. They're saying TV two, but they don't know shit. Okay. Okay. Do the 2v2, 2v2, 2v2. Um, th two two. Thank you guys so much for playing a really cool game. It was fun to watch you guys. I see GG. people are leaving. Thank you. GG, Interesting. well played. GG. Um, yes. Uh, what, what do you think, Michael? I don't mind. I'm uh, I'm actually, yeah, I don't know what to say because uh, Potato Stream on, on one side, your stream is saying 2v2. My stream is saying Iron Man. I'm, <laughs> you know, You're... I don't know what to do. Uh, I trust I, your stream. Your tr your st <laughs> my stream doesn't know the save multiplayer scene very well. Your stream does, so I trust your scene. Your blah, 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 your stream. <laughs> I would uh, <laughs> I would actually go for the two v two as well. You want to do two v two? If you want, yeah, I want to do a two v two as well, and oh. mostly because uh, <laughs> I don't want to stop the stream. And second, it's a different. It's a, the third type of uh, uh, content that we could get out there. And I think the 2v2s are actually quite um, uh, competitive. It's much harder than the 4v4 and uh, quite different than FFA. So I think it's, uh, it's a good way to show them. Poggers, dude. All right, then. We will, uh, we will take a short break and we'll be back for the 2v2. Okay. Let's, right. uh, let's wait a little bit and uh, put a pause on. And get some music going and then in 20 minutes we're back we're gonna be back all right guys you heard michael uh i'm gonna go take a short break we'll be back for playing the 2v2s or for, not for playing for for casting the 2v2s in about 15 to 20 minutes i'll see you guys there
the guys. <laughs>
actually get around to releasing them. I just like it. This all happened during a weekend where I'm like casting Civ, so it's going to be hard for you to get it done. Okay, there we go. Mod versions. Okay, perfect. So we got Vladimir, we got Tamlin, we got Friesel, and just Dima. Now they're going to go for the usual pick and ban phase. And as you can see over here, they're going for the map pool choices. Let's see what map they're going to choose to go for. Uh, of so course, the much stuff in, smaller The stuff in map. red has already been banned, right? Yeah, yeah. So they're only allowed to pick from the ones that are white now. Yeah, so Tilted, Lake, Highlands, Seas, Seas. Continents, Islands, yeah, Pangea, yeah. Highlands, Tilted, Axis, Primordial, and Random. Oh, looks like Continents and Islands taking another game there. Interesting choice. Uh, so, oh, Primordial also taking another map. Which map? It seems like Seven Seas is quite popular these days, Michael. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that is indeed correct. You, you do get those coastal trade routes most of the time to play with, and it's amazing. Of of course, it's a big map. You get to settle quite a few cities. Uh, but I think Pangea in 2v2s is also quite uh, quite good. There we go, Pangea. It's going to be the map. Pangea, right. Excellent. Uh, I wasn't expecting Pangea. I was expecting a 7C, because uh, 7C seems to be popular. It's a bit like Highland with less hills and more, like, water. So water saves are a little bit more viable. I kind of, because I know for a long time, Highland, Highlands was like the meta map, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the players got a bit uh, burned out with Highlands. It's an extremely long game with um, the beginning, not that much action. And then you get to sim, you get to sit in your corner and then boom, a lot of action is happening all at the same time. Yes, for sure. Oh, I need to update my stream. I'll be two seconds. Yeah. Oh, right. I need to update my uh, map as well. Yeah, I have mine saying it's a two. It's a four v four. This is a two v two that we're doing. <laughs> and so, is there is there a major meta difference between a two v two and a four v four? Obviously, you have less players, so there's like a little bit less going on on the map. But in general, so. Strategic resources are going to be an issue. Uh, they can't uh, hard upgrade that many uh, that many units without uh, banking a lot of uh, those strategic resources in their uh, encampments, uh, buildings, and so on. Uh, that is going to be a problem. Gold again is going to be quite an issue, uh, and most of the time uh, we're going to see them uh, fighting from quite an early stage in the game. I would say uh, so. Uh, especially compared to 4v4s when you've seen you have those careful timings started up where you have those uh, uh, later game uh, timings uh, this should be a lot uh, quicker uh, 1v1s are also awesome in that sense as well uh, again another yeah, problem say, is the, um, the the faster early game war that feels like very much so like a 1v1 style type of play yeah Looks like uh, they banned Alexander, the last one. So they went for Teddy Roughrider, they went for Scythia, Genghis Khan, Catherine de' Medici, the Black Queen, uh, Rome, and then uh, Mas uh, Alexander, Macedon. And oh, another thing, proximity is quite um, uh, close to your opponents. So it's yeah. definitely going to be war all of the time. So having a civilization with war bonuses like Shaka is 100% of an advantage. That's why they took all of them out. I'm actually curious how they didn't take out something like Persia. Yeah, because I mean, like, especially Persia, who gets that like super hard. Well, the Immortal is super strong. There's a yeah. lot of stuff going for a per Persia. So I definitely feel like if that's true, if we're seeing a lot of like close quarters, a lot of early fighting, we're expecting to see a lot of early game saves. Um, so out of curiosity, these bands up here on the board, are these, oh, there's Chandra Gupta. Oh, are we going to see the other India as well? Are we going to see Gandhi? Gandhi, Gandhi? Double, double India, India, wham, bam. Is that a thing that people do, <laughs> double India? Yeah, well, bar was all over the map. One <laughs> one big thing, uh, there was a change on uh, the Indias. Uh, Chandra Gupta did get uh, a one movement for combat and religious units. And then um, India does get it for his um, uh, civilian units. For the settlers, for the wow. builders, uh, you can imagine four movement Varus coming against you. Yeah, that's terrifying. That's extremely yes. terrifying. It looks like Gaul and Bjork's being picked up here. 
Yeah, and Biotix is uh, quite good uh, when it comes to the beginning, but it does have a weakness. The Geese that they cannot uh, upgrade into a Swordsman, so you have to hard build your Swordsman if you want to go that way. Ooh, and Maya. Okay, okay. We, we got quite a matchup over here. So four civilizations that we haven't seen uh, since yesterday. Oh, that's an interesting set of choices. Like, I wouldn't have expected Maya to be a pick in a 2v2 because it's a very early game focus but i suppose they do have that plus three combat strength units within six tiles of their capital and the Holche has plus five combat strength when it's fighting a wounded opponent so i can kind of see where they're coming from with these picks yeah um what about shaka i feel like is a pretty straightforward pick right yeah, uh, Shaka is easy easy to uh, work with. Uh, MP attack, it does have those um, the early core ability, which is amazing. Uh, of course, more damage when it comes to um, his mobilization. Uh, we do have Tamlin with goal. Again, uh, relatively easy to uh, think what he's going to do here. He's going to try to get a lot of production with his Opidums uh, and get an advantage from just hard building units. I think you need to ready up, by the way. Oh. Uh, and then Frizil. There we go. Uh, with Chandra Gupta. Varus probably gonna need to get the um, encampment down for those uh, generals lady six guy well i've seen actually best of both worlds of lady six guy but i gotta say well i should say the both extremities i gotta say the low roll and lady six guy is a bit too taxing if you don't get a continent with the plantations oh that's terrible oh my god yeah. no banana no tobacco no silk no nothing it's just terrible yeah, I mean, like, even just a couple of cotton tiles and, and maybe, like, a little bit of sugar, that'll do you. But if you get nothing, it could be incredibly rough. Um, yeah. So, here, let's do a little pre-game prediction. Who do you think is going to get the best oh spawn location? God. Who do you think? Oh Who's going to get the high roll? Oh, my God. No, I'm, I'm watching their spawns right now, and I'm, like, I'm thinking right now, uh, oh, my God, like, they're, they're 1v1 in each other. They might actually need to, uh, how to say, remap this. We got Maya against India. And then on the other side, they're split in the middle by an inland sea. We got the goals going against Zulu. <laughs> like this is this is terrible. They can't trade with each other. <laughs> they can't do anything. It's just one v one. Oh, I'm still loading into the game. Perhaps I have run into an error here. Yeah, sure. I gotta. Yeah. I don't know what it is, man. I just, I crash every time I try to load into a game on multiplayer. Uh, drivers, maybe? Somebody uh, needs to look at the, your uh, computer. Yeah, but did you know. actually crash or are you just loading? Yeah, for access crash. I'll try to rejoin really quick and otherwise I'll just stay out of the game, I guess. Uh, in the meantime, I can stream for you. There we go. Thank you, thank you. I just no describe problem. to me what you see. We'll do uh, we'll do the radio cast. So what's going on? What do you see, Michael? Be my eyes. Uh, so we got um, Ulundi on the top right corner with Galapagos Islands really close to him. Um, uh, looks like uh, he is going to be quite close to the goals. Actually, about ten tiles away from the goals. This is going to be a problem. Is right smack in the middle of the map? We got an inland sea. And that's going to separate them in 1v1s. And this is th this is going to be action all over the game. If they keep this map, I, which I doubt it's going to happen, uh, th this is going to be extremely taxing for both of them. I can't even say, oh my god, one of them have has an advantage. Uh, on uh, the goals here, we do have a few stone tiles on the west side, which will allow him to get... Uh, yeah, zero MS, I guess. Uh, yeah, zero MS. Okay. Uh, w w with uh, plus six opidums, uh, which is going to be nice, plus four opidums as well. And it looks like they're starting to settle. Uh, not bad, not bad. On Maya, though, let's see. Maya, plus four observatory, plus four observatory. Definitely not bad. Uh, he has dice tiles and cocoa tiles and some bananas. So that's that's good. That's good. Uh, not a lot of them, but it's enough to give him at least some plus two observatories. Not to mention some plus fours. That sounds like it's a good start. I mean, it's not a oh, terrible we one. Joined. I'm finally we joined. in, Poggers. Is in. Is in, boys. We're in. So okay. you were saying there's a 1v1 breaking out here. So uh, talk me through that. We've got Gaul over here. 
right next to Zulu. Ooh, I do not like the golf position. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, right? no. <laughs> <laughs> it's so close to Zulu. And then on the other side is Chandra Gupta going against uh, Maya. So they're like, war against Simur, war against Simur. That, that's what's happening over here. It's like the worst matchup ever. Instead of having Chandra Gupta go against Zulu, <laughs> which would have been at least, you know, a, a little bit better, you have Simur going against uh, War. Whoa! Relic! Maya just got a relic! relic. Yes, yes. Maya just got a relic. Oh my god. Is this me? Am I playing this game? I swear to god, I feel like I get relics <laughs> every game. That is incredible. That high roll. Oh, I'm so hyped. I wonder... I wonder what they're going to do with that relic. They, what, do you think that's going to change their game plan or is that just a free pantheon for them? <clears throat> uh, well, the, the thing with the relic is uh, he's uh, going to get the first pick of a pantheon, right? I don't think he's going to use it for some something like tourism or uh, something like that. But at the same time, it does feel like uh, he could also help out uh, Vladimir and get a fast pantheon as well. Uh, well, get a pantheon. He, they can both go for... Um, the plus one production card instead of going for the uh, the faith the god king card so that would give them a little bit of an advantage at least 12 production yeah it's like a little early game tempo which i mean here's the thing yeah. civ and basically every competitive game these are games of small advantages if you can eke out a few maybe 10 12 production here or there you can eke out a battlefield advantage which you can swing towards a win yeah exactly and this this is exactly what the players are trying to go for here like little little advantages that start to uh, add up over time and when it comes to that uh, 1060 1070 boom you see such a big advantage uh, you've seen early game uh, in the earlier game how much it mattered for australia uh, to get so many cities for for her to uh, try to get those uh, that district discount and so on and so forth compared to other players in the game. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the early game, the the effects of what happens in the early game ripples throughout time. Like, I mean, just look at the difference here. Uh, Zulu here cranking out a settler in three turns from now, whereas Gaul, their settler is coming out in five turns. And I can't help but feel like that small little perturbation, that small little change in the fabric of this game, it'll have ripples that affect down the rest of it. Yeah, one little information here. I, uh, my stream did uh, catch me over here not saying it. Uh, you have uh, a rule banning tra uh, trading relics before turn 20. Because we had situations in which somebody got a relic 10-3 and then he gave it to his team. And before 10-12, everybody had a, <laughs> a pantheon, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that would be like incredibly broken in a team game. So what's happening yeah. here? This is a map vote, right? They're going to vote on whether or yes. not they want to keep this map. Yes, exactly. And we're going to need to see them. Well, one thing uh, is, I do have to say it from the beginning, uh, if they do go for a remap, we're going to probably see a quick relobby right after the remap is uh, happening uh, because uh, there are some these things happening. We do need to fix it through the mods, but now it's the mod team uh, at work. So uh, we're going to see when that oh, actually happens. The players but are it's having fine. things um, right after the remap. So the remap starts up fine. And then right in the next turn after the remap, they get desynced. I don't know why. Nobody gotcha. knows why. So it looks like... A we got a remap. We have a yeah. remap. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just Dima and Vladimir went for the remap. Uh, okay, we'll see. We'll see how this will end up for. Do I, is it okay for me to click okay on this little pop-up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know the UI that well. So the map is yeah. being rebuilt right now. We will be seeing a new map. The game is being reset. Uh, and we'll probably have to re-lobby. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but I'm kind of excited. I, I kind of liked the way this map was going to shake out. But I think it, it was going to be a little bit too predictable of a game, right? It was going to be the two war players. Um, the two war players just killing the eco players. So I kind of want to see like an East versus West where each each team is, has their own side of the Pangea. I think that would be a little bit more interesting to observe. I think so. I think so. East versus West uh, would be quite nice with the war team in, uh, in the middle <laughs> and the Simmers in the back line. We actually have one of those competitions going around, by the way, East versus West uh, with um, a predetermined uh, map placement. For the players it's a competition from the french community we did end up with the finals uh, just about to get to the finals and it does 
open up so many possibilities that are not available in the normal uh, randomness uh, random uh, games oh for access crash yep every time i try to load into a game for access crash for access crash every time uh, may i ask what manufacturer for your card do you have i think uh, it was nvidia GT? nvidia okay Interesting. Oh, oh the manufacturer it's a uh i don't remember it might be an evga or something i'd have to double check yeah. But I guess latest drivers and everything. Yep, 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 yep. So weird. It's a bad look, I think. Bad look. Um. Yeah, but um. I'll, I'll get I'll get rejoined. Or are, are they remaking the lobby? Uh, one sec. Let's see. Uh, or okay, you can uh, pull off my screen and. Uh... If they do get a real lobby, which I think it's usually a hundred percent, you can just join then. Sure thing. I've got your thingy open. Okay, there we go. Oh, they're asking if they can uh, play their turns. Uh, unfortunately, well, that is. You got a little trigger happy with the rim. They need to load in. Who needs to play their turn? Sorry. Uh, I think they might not be able to play their turn, or uh, are they loading in? I don't know. Something is happening. They're not. It's a please wait something. Then one didn't happen. I don't Maybe know. Maybe it's because I'm it disconnected. I'm trying to join. Yeah, we're uh, we're lobbying. It's fine. Yeah, makes sense. We'll get it sorted, don't you worry. We'll be fine. Okay, let me give you the link. There we go, click on that. I'll delete the previous one. There we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're a hero of the revolution, Michael. I appreciate it. Pleasure. So how is the weather in uh, your part of the world there? You know what? Uh, it's been pretty rainy. It's been pretty rough, but it's actually the last couple of hours now the sun has come out. We've been getting that last little bit of sunshine that you get towards the end of the year. It's not too bad. I quite enjoy it. Oh, nice. Nice. But it's uh, still under like, what, 25 degrees or something like that? Yeah, it, it's still a little bit cold. I need to switch with... Vladimir. Vlad. Yeah. I don't know how he uh, ended up on that slot. Neither do I. I I click <laughs> switch with him. Do I need to do anything else? Uh, no, I think he needs to also click switch. So I'll just wait until he does it because I wait. He said he's yep. ready. He's readied up. What the hell? Oh, oh one second. <laughs> Maybe they want you to play. Emergency sub potato. <laughs> Let's go. Um, I think he's just uh, quickly FK or something. Okay, there we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> Oh, 
oh, he's on the wrong team as well. So cool. So cool. <laughs> okay, this is uh, quite a change up over here. <laughs> oh my god, he's on the wrong team. <laughs> Sneaky, sneaky. The, the thing I like about the 1v1s and the 2v2s is most of the time you're going to get action much earlier. Uh, the same thing I like on the 4v4s when we're talking about Pangea or we're talking about something like uh, smaller maps, small continents and so on. Um, most of the time the players do prefer the um, security i would say of the um, longer maps the highlands and of course seven seas and so on uh, right. which does give you a lot of opportunity to talk about that same talk about uh, how uh, the different the little differences uh, actually add up how um, one does better than the other the civilization bonuses and so on but uh, at the end of the day action is still action you know like <laughs> it's still to, to, to get those uh, war moves going. Yes, absolutely. I'm taking a look at the map here and uh, it looks like Zulu in the back line on the right side with uh, Maya down the south. Uh, India all the way to the left on a deer tile and I do not see. Oh, okay. So we do have an east versus west game. Uh, with yeah, Maya you on got the your wish. Line. You yeah, this is going to be very, yeah. very interesting. I kind of prefer the positioning of Maya and Zulu. They just seem to be more central on the land. Um, Gaul and India spawning on the coast here. Slightly unfortunate, particularly for Gaul, who does not love the coastline. I would maybe yeah. look for a remap in their position. <clears throat> I'm curious if they're going to go for a remap here. The thing is, he still has good opidums. Uh, I do see those stone tires. I see the um, horse. Uh, and he could get coastal trade routes with India. They're just going to need to force their way towards the east uh, and get more cities out, uh, which, of course, they're going to end up uh, blocking Maya. Maya, actually, I think is the worst one to be in the middle, mostly because um, he can't really go far further than six tiles away from his city center because, you know, the, the penalties start to kick in. So he can't yeah. grab the land uh, too far away. No, for sure. And... I'm not seeing a huge amount of pastures here. I mean, there are three pastures in the capital, but this is not exactly what I would call like an ideal start for the Maya. Oh, plantations, you mean? Yeah. What did I say? Pastures? Yeah, plantations. Oops. Yes, plantations. <laughs> plantations, yes. plantations. Sorry. Yeah. yeah plus, plus. Uh, I was, uh, indeed, I was looking at that myself to incense style but at least he's going to have wine and incense. And to, I see tea tiles to the north. So, uh, again, not amazing but it's okay -ish. it's not yeah. low rolling it's no. definitely not low rolling no i don't think it's Man. a low roll but i think you honestly like the the god roll on a uh on a maya game is if you can settle on a luxury and ha or, or something like that and have another one nearby like that would be the absolute god tier um oh, my, my chat is saying that we used up all of the good spawns for my a few days ago that <laughs> we had a, a 4v4 going around and uh, man I, I gotta say, they remapped three times, and the first two maps, Maya had godlike spawns, like plus six everywhere, four plantation continent. Can you can you imagine how low of a chance that happening to you? There is a four plantation continent, <laughs> and oh then my God. the one that they actually needed to play because they used all of the remap tokens. He had zero plantations, oh. zero. Oh, man. <laughs> it was so bad. Oh, no. <laughs> See, that is the yeah. danger with a remap. You can always get a map that's worse. You can always exactly. get a worse map. Exactly. And that's actually what happened there. But anyway, let's, let's quickly take a look here. India, insane open sky. Oh, my God. Four horses, three sheep tiles in the capital. How is this? Oh, my. I, I don't think I ever saw this many pashes in one city center no for sure he's going to be able to ride horses around and make as many winter coats as he wants because he has enough sheep yeah. for everybody in this game well actually he's actually only got three so somebody's going to be missing out on a sheep <clears throat> 
But dude, can you imagine the God of the Open Sky? Or even if he goes for the God of Craftsman here, those horse oh, yeah. styles will be incredible. He's got the iron as well. Oh, man, I think, I feel like God of the Open Sky is the play, but I would be tempted if I saw those horses to go for God of Craftsman as well. Open, uh, extra production always going to be good. Yeah, indeed, indeed. We do need to see Frizzle here uh, trying to get the sim well before he's going to try to go everything, anything uh, in the world screen. He's very far away. Like, look, look at that. It's one map, literally one map between him and his opponent. It's so, so problematic for him. Yeah, for sure. And like, in all honesty, these kind of isolated starts, they're a blessing and a curse. They're a blessing because you're not going to get messed with in the early game. But the curse is when st stuff starts to hit the fan, you're too far away to really make anything happen. So it's going to be yeah. about building supply lines to the east. It's going to be about simming up. I, I feel like this game, if they stick with this map, it could go pretty late, Michael. What do you think? Uh, I think it will need to go late. I, I don't see anything... Uh happening really quickly here to uh, take them out or even phase them out of their uh, oh they want to remap okay or even phase them out from uh, uh simming okay so we'll, we'll see we, we might not have oh east versus west next time no we we'll might have a north them. versus south we might have a whole big humble jumble yeah. piggledy wiggledy um I, I, I totally respect the remap here I feel like it was the correct decision by this team their positioning I don't want to say it was unplayable, but it was not good, I don't think. Yeah, but to be fair, Zulu backline, eh, both of them would have probably went for uh, the late game, for tanks, artilleries, uh, tried to go uh, as fast as possible. Uh, I think Zulu in the late game is a bit better than uh, Chandra Gupta, actually a lot better than Chandra Gupta. Let's get an extra plus five when he hits uh, mobilization, I believe. It's, uh, it's very strong, very strong. And of course, early armies, early everything. Uh, can hard build a lot of units. Mm. I uh, I think you're correct in the assessment that they needed to remap this. They, they don't have that early push on them. No, and that early push is very, very critical for saves like Zulu and Chandra Gupta. Uh, very interesting little map here. Depending on where the players spawn, we could have a super, super close game. He's versus West again. What? Where's Zulu? Wait, where's Zulu? Did Zulu not spawn? Oh, he's on the far left on oh. the coast. Oh, so it's, my it's God. Not this is a two versus, versus one? <laughs> That's a little bit scary. Oh. This is exactly what we were talking about with the remaps, right? But this time, actually, the ones that remapped high rolled a little bit. Like, Yep, 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 yep. I feel like the remap just paid off here. Uh, the one thing I will say, though, their Simmer player is safe. So if he could sit back and get just enough economy to support Zulu, do you think Zulu could fight 2v1? Uh, he can definitely fight 2v1, uh, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be very hard. I think he has a good matchup uh, against uh, India. Those impies are going to be amazing against uh, Varus. Uh, then I guess we're going to need to see what Gold will do here. I'm not so certain he's going to get to fight at the beginning. Like they're going to get to fight uh, early. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Oh. No, I don't think we'll see too much fighting early. I think people will dance around each other and trying to like f suss out where they are. Ooh, look at that northeastern area. There's an amazing, amazing natural wonder within grabbing range oh, of yeah. the Maya. Is it so? I think so. You may as well settle a city there, right? There's no reason not to. Yeah. I mean, the penalties, that's the way. You need to settle six cities from your city, otherwise you're getting penalized. Oh, it's odious. I mean, for a yeah, big city like Maya, that, bro. <laughs> it's for, a, for a huge side city like that, I think it's worth it to take yeah. that penalty. I think we're going to have a quick lobby because of the map, what I was saying, that they're going to re sync probably every time. And it is what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. No worries. If they do a re lobby, that's not a problem. Yep. Players' capitals coming down right now. It looks like Wack Kabnal, the Mayan capital, being settled on a 3 1 base tile. Plenty of 2 2s to work around it. Oh, we didn't take a look at the plantations. So he has Coco. He has Coco. He has Coco. Uh, okay, bananas in the south. That's it? Oh, he's at the two are honey and ivory. Okay. And amber. He's at the two. He's at the three. So just Coco. 
Yeah, not, uh, a, not an amazing role for plantations, but he does at least have one good one that he can make use of. Uh, I would... Yeah, some bananas here and then, I guess. Yeah, sure, sure. I would feel a Banana little power. bit sad right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not crying, uh, but I'm not happy either. To be fair, uh, Gold has a problem also. Doesn't have uh, that many stone tiles. Only had, like, two in the south, maybe one on the west side, and that's about it. Uh, he's uh, gonna have a bit of an issue with his opidums. Uh, the good thing is that he doesn't know about it's that um, uh, iron to the north and of course the horse he's gonna have a yep. plus four there oh I got a fire axis oh same what? what the hell I think everybody got a fire axis crash Let's go ahead and send that fra fax, uh, that crash report who knows it probably gets printed off the Sid Meier's desk himself and then he promptly throws it in the bin yeah I don't know. Maybe it's already sent to the bin. I don't know. <laughs> the printer just actually empties out into a bin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, have you played the Satisfactory? I've played a de decent amount of Satisfactory. I, I never really got super into it. I played it when it first came out. Okay. Oh, man. It's miles away from uh, the first version now. Has so many little uh, good to have things on it, but anyway, I, w I wanted to point out that you just get uh, you know the the belt rolling from uh, the producer to directly to the bin to the to the sink. You know, there's a, a sink that gives you points that basically you just put every every scrap that you have in there, every extra. Oh, cool! I didn't know you could do that. It's been so long because, so, like again, yeah. like I said, I played it way when it when it first came out. Oh, version 6 came out, though. Version 6? Damn. <laughs> My problem yeah. with those games is, like, every time I play them, I want to start a new run. You have to put another, like, 30 to 40 hours in, getting your, like, setup going. Yeah. Okay. Let me give you the link. I know what you mean, but uh, at the same time, they put so many additional uh, stuff in that it kind of makes you want to start from the beginning. Uh, sorry, getting the link off you now. Um, come on, save. Don't crash. Let's go. Can't do it. You can do it. Okay, all right, I'm in, I'm ready. See, I think everybody, oh, uh, did I miss? Oh, I need to rejoin also. So Yep. On uh, whenever there's a new version coming out for uh, Satisfactory, we, you know, me and my some of my friends do get uh, the new save going, and it's such an amazing uh, feeling when you get to uh, use what you learned in previous versions to start off from the beginning with a totally different mentality. Yep, yep, yep. That, that's tons of fun. Uh, the one thing yeah. I find though is if you play those games in multiplayer. Uh, there's always like one guy who plays it way more than anyone else and like builds like a giga base <laughs> that like completely dwarfs everyone else's base and like you load up and you're like okay guys day two it's time for us to get the tier two technology and he just like floats by and like grav boots like hey what's up guys I'm on like tier five technology <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I know what you mean but it's good that um, well with my friends we're trying to build uh, a single base trying to add in uh, and using like a few simple rules of uh, developing month yeah but we we ended up figuring out that we can't uh, play without for example a simple google sheet we need to know what we output from each and everything and what we need because otherwise everybody else that's going to come up to do a little bit of a change we'll need to do the math all over again <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? yeah yeah for sure 
Dude, uh, I mean, half the fun of playing some of those games can be building the spreadsheets that make it easy to play, you know? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Right, so, it's good. I, I love how the games are starting to uh, in, uh, how to say uh, make you use your brain a little more and at the same time uh, get uh, some valuable skills out of it. Well, I think it's interesting because back in the day, games had a bunch of math going on and they told you nothing. And now it feels like games are, they got simplified and now they're being made more complicated again. Um, yeah. Complicated games are seeing a resurgence. Uh, so it looks like Lady Six Guy is rejoining to perhaps unstick the turn. Uh, have we talked about the city states in this game, Michael, yet? We did not, actually. We have uh, two, four, five of them, and it looks like Mohenjo Daro is going to be the only one for culture. That's pretty good, pretty good. Uh, Hatusa and Fez coming up for science. Kahokia on trade, uh, Candy on faith, and I just noticed there are six of them. Actually, Hong Kong coming up. Uh, where, where is Hong Kong? Oh, in the north. Am I missing something here? For... No, I just counted wrong. Okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah, just... yeah. You, just, you, you did okay. a lazy counting. You glanced at it. Yeah. Um, out of curiosity, so from your first impression, you look at this list of city-states, which one do you think is the most important to contest? Uh, I think the science one needs to keep up, uh, keep uh, on Maya. He definitely needs the extra bonuses on his um, uh, on his observatories. And then uh, Fez also would be a good one. Uh, Fez, I don't think he's going to be that useful for his um, uh, conversion of but I'm pretty sure it's going to be useful just for the straight up uh, science bonuses. Uh, Maya over here can keep both of them and some of them can be also kept away from their uh, opponent's eyes. Uh, you see they're quite far away and Fez, for example, can be, if they do manage to just keep one away in, it's going to be such a massive bonus. Yeah, for sure. And if you don't reveal it by, by ever getting suzerainty of it, how are they to know that you're benefiting from that city state? Uh, a question, exactly. do I have to click countdown? No. It's okay. uh, it's only the host that can click anyway. Fine. I mean, you can click it, but I don't think it does anything. Shouldn't do anything. I Yeah, I don't know who the host is, so... Ooh. Yeah. I'm just going to sit here and not click anything. Um, yeah, because my impression was that Cahokia would be a pretty important city-state here because those Cahokia mounts are a really great way to generate extra amenities and not necessarily to work, but but trading a builder charge for an amenity in every city, that seems like it'd be worth a lot. I like that also. I haven't seen the players like that that much. Like, I'm I'm not so certain why they're not uh, trying to do that uh, most of the time. But I yes, I like it a lot. I, I do agree with you over there. The extra amenity is amazing. Yes, you get some extra gold, but mm, that's definitely not that great. Yeah, I can't help but feel like players are sleeping on Cahokia. I mean, like, look, here's the thing. Players are willing like? to plug... Oh. Sorry? Okay. You, you cut off with the feel like and then nothing happened and then players are like five seconds later. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't help but feel like players are sleeping on Cahokia. Uh, you know, there's a ton of value to get from amenities. Like yeah. players will plug in garrison and buy scouts in every single town. Well, you know, sacrificing a single build charge for an amenity seems really, really powerful. Yeah, indeed. Well, we're, we're definitely going to need to see if um, Maya is going to try to get that and who's going to try to get those amenities. Now, finally, the game has started. We're at turn five and it looks like uh, India. Okay, let's see India. Iron in the capital. Horses. Where horses? No horses. Oh, he does have horses underneath his scout. Uh, he's also going to have Mato Tipila in the north to settle, but I think he's going to go southeast for those mountains. Really like his uh, second city on the south. Two diamond tiles over there for him to use uh, and of course uh, he's gonna try to maximize the city count that he will benefit from here uh, he did meet Zulu and now they know this is the moment now they know oh yes Zulu. they know the positioning of that Zulu player yeah how yeah. do you think they feel when they see this uh, honestly I wouldn't feel great with India well, because uh, Varus are just out by those impies, uh, anti calves versus calves, not a good matchup. But um, other than that, I'm pretty sure India can use other uh, units than um, uh, his uh, Varus. Uh, for example, even arches are going to be amazing. Uh, we'll see what he's going to try to do here and uh, how much land he's going to try to uh, get from Zulu. The biggest thing is, and I think this is going to be their priority, to keep Zulu contained. They need to keep him on three cities, four cities. Otherwise, he's going to be too big later on in the game. 
Yeah, definitely. They need to set up like a perimeter. They need to set up a border wall of units around yeah. him, keep him from expanding. Because I feel like if this Zulu gets to five, six cities, he's going to become a huge problem to deal with. Yeah, exactly. And even if, yes, they can go against him two versus one, it's still going to be a big problem. What, what I do see is uh, Zulu managing uh, to try to get some protection into his Cetra and has an amazing God of Craftsman. So many horses, so much iron uh, all over the place. Uh, he has a problem with the fresh water going towards uh, India, though. So I, I'm actually really curious who's going to get that coal city to the north of the Warriors. That That's going to be majorly important as a position. Yeah, I can't help but feel like India will be able to get to that first. Because if I'm looking at the positioning, they are, what, like one, two, three, four, five moves away. Whereas the Zulu, to try and capture that coal city, they're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven moves away. Yeah, so I feel like India is going to be able to snatch that, that coal city up much easier. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't think actually Vladimir, oh, actually neither of them can be aware of what's going on here. They're trying to scout out and uh, of course uh, it's going to be a while until they figure out the perfect placements. We have an, uh, a serious advantage when it comes to uh, watching what's going on. Um, we, we can see all of the land discovered, we can see the choke points much faster than they do. So it's quite a challenge for them to figure out, okay, that's definitely going to put back uh, Zulu. They don't know, for example, they don't know Zulu is coastal at this point. Zulu might have a connection through the west side. They don't know if it's west, if it's east, how, how the map looks like. Yeah, for sure. I'm just looking at their vision right now. And like, Ga or, 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 sorry, Chandra Gupta, he knows about this mountain pass here. He knows about this choke point, but he doesn't, like, like you're saying, he doesn't know anything about it. Like for all he knows, Maya could be to the left of the Zulu. Yeah, exactly. And of course, uh, on the east side, by the way, Maya did figure out where the goal is, or at least they need they did meet each other at Mohenia Jodaro. But again, they don't know what's behind Maya, or, and uh, immediately Maya is going to put a city on the west side, getting the position on that uh, city state. Yeah, I, I think one thing I would like to see Maya do is maybe even kill Mohenjo Daro early. I know it's outside of that six tile range. But that would put a lot of pressure on Gaul and maybe take a lot of pressure off the Zulu. Yeah, <clears throat> true, true, true. Now, of course, Maya has some extreme advantages when it comes to its observatory. So that early science can allow him to get to um, uh, nights very, very quickly. Uh, he might uh, do a lot of damage early on against uh, the Gauls. We do need to see if he's going to go for it because, again, production, gold, and so on will be uh, issues. I think uh, we might not see them go for some early warfare here, even though oh, that would be amazing. I think uh, a stable game uh, would be the preferred choice between them. A cute little thing happening over here. Uh, India sitting on the Fountain of Youth, <laughs> preventing <laughs> <Yeah>. Zulu <laughs> from picking up any extra healing from that. The Slinger just standing there wishing that they could step onto that tile oh no he stepped off oh, he, he wants to find out oh that settler that settler yeah. is under threat and he, uh, Zulu just got out maneuvered here and this is the the biggest thing by the way India benefiting from an extra movement on his units imagine four movement scouts three movement warriors uh, it's extremely dangerous to handle because most of the time you you don't take into account that extra movement on your units no, it can really catch you off guard because when you're doing your calculations about how fast units can move, you're thinking about normal units. This settler is actually in danger because this warrior could very easily cross that river and catch him. Oh my God, he's going to do it. Check this out. There we go. He's going to do it. <laughs> he oh just got no. it right next to the settler. War declaration being sent. Frisian is going to go for it. And Vladimir is the host, by the way. He's gonna he's shift entering, and he got his scout. Okay, he got his scout from the south. Ooh, <laughs> that, that was, was very close. scary. Yeah, I, I love the tension. I love how these players fly very close to the sun. <clears throat> It's, yeah, it's unbelievable. They know what kind of advantages they can take. Uh, um, into account what kind of units they uh, they can use. Uh, how they can bait their opponents into doing something and also i i gotta i gotta spend a f one minute to talk about fountain of youth here an extra 10 hp healing in any territory for all of your units is gonna be massive look yeah, how close it is huge. to his cities 
Yeah, it's going to give his units like insane sustain because normally when you're in an enemy's territory, you only heal five. But the fact that he'll be healing 15 health inside enemy territory and 20 health baseline in his own territory, his units are going to be incredibly strong at holding the line. Yeah. This is going to be uh, quite quite problematic for both uh, India and, of course, uh, Gaul over here. I, I do see India did settle another city, Jabalpur, to the south of uh, his uh, capital. Uh, he's getting another settler in four and he's starting to build up uh, his scout, uh, his uh, single slinger counts. Uh, he did notice his north is full of Tandra, so he's probably not going to want to settle there anytime soon. Mm, I don't see him going for uh, religions, for monumentality, uh, even though I believe religious victory is active, or I don't know if it's activated. Is it activated in 2v2s? I might need to ask that because uh, there was, um, well, it's activated here. Uh, there was a bit of a um, uh, discussion yesterday. In the 1v1s, they deactivated the... Um, uh, Religion victory? Religious victory, yeah. they. This is the first, I think, tournament with 1v1s in which we have it deactivated. It's actually, in 1v1s, it's the only... A viable victory con a viable religious victory condition because in every other case you have very easy ways to defend it yes whereas in a 1v1 it's very very difficult because you have to get your own religion and if that's not part of your game plan it becomes quite hard yes the the thing is i've seen even zulu play for the defense and he did manage to overwhelm his opponent i've seen incredible 1v1s with uh, the religious victory also in play so i'm i'm on the fence if it's actually that trolling or not i, I would say it's not actually but it is what it is uh, players that don't uh, or are not used to defending against uh, the religious victory will find it extremely hard players that are used to it they, they just you know think it's uh, normal so there's always yeah. going to be that discussion the analogy I always use is, is it's like being cannon rushed in StarCraft. You you just got to be ready for it. If you're ready for it, yeah. you'll live. Yeah, exactly. You, you got to scout out your territory, <laughs> you know, it is, and your opponent will make such a big sacrifice and he's not going to get anything. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> so tell me about the positioning here. Um, whose position do you really like? Gaul actually aggressively settling towards his own ally. I, well, I say aggressively, but just like settling towards him boxing in his friend i uh, what about that city of bibrax why do you think he settled it there was it for the elephants i think it was oh yes for the two three one time definitely make a difference there i'm actually a bit surprised he went that far to the north uh and settled next to the mountains on the geothermal i would have thought he's gonna want to use that geothermal for um the campuses um I'm I mean, it's the second geothermal that he's settled on, and his science is pretty high compared to the other players. He's up to seven science per turn. Yeah. My my biggest concern is usually Gaul wants to play around uh, very big opidums. Uh, like, he, he can he needs to use that extra production. Uh, you can't really play the goals without that. And, of course, uh, he can get plus four from Bibrax, but it's going to be relatively expensive, two extra tiles that he needs to buy. While uh, Aduatuka cannot place that plus four anymore, he's going to need to place it to the south. So I guess he can't really use uh, Gavron Plaza shenanigans, districts, and so on. Yeah, we'll so I, I want to I wanna wait. I want to wait. To see what he's gonna do here i'm uh i can't say i dislike this pawn but it's uh, not something that you uh, there are way too many possibilities with a uh, little few benefits between them like little differences between them to say uh, oh he needs to go with that because that's gonna be the best thing to go for yeah for sure for sure i'm i do like maya being all alone on the east side though even though He's going to have to play around that observatory. Uh, the fact that he's going to be out of the war for quite a bit of time is going to mean he has a strong possibility to go for the late game much faster than the goal will get there. Remember, goal production, but without any population, without extra population, how is he going to get all of his tricks up? You, you you get Opidum, Gavron Plaza, you need campuses, you need encampments, you need so many districts, you need commercials, how are you going to get the gold for him? 
I don't know. That's a tough question to answer because normally you rely on your farms and your um, plantations to get your gold. But he, you know, Maya here doesn't have that many farms, doesn't have that many plantations. So cash flow yeah. is going to be a little bit of an issue. Yep. Yep. We'll, we'll see. It, hey, it baby, is that's where Cahokia comes into the game, baby. I'm telling you, plus three gold from Cahokia mounts, you get an extra <laughs> amenity. I'm telling you, man, yeah. people are sleeping on that Cahokia. Yeah, that's three units right there. <laughs> you know, three gold, three units, yeah. Exactly. Uh, it, it does look like India is moving towards that coal settle that we talked about. I think that's going to be a very, very important settlement to get because that's going to project a lot of power down into the Zulu homeland. And this Zulu settler is also being harassed every single step of the way, no matter where it goes. It's constantly being shouted by an Indian warrior. Oh, he's trying to keep him away from settling on the Fountain of Youth. We got another scout coming up over there uh, through the Fountain of Youth to uh, take a hit against uh, Zulu. Zulu just bought a slinger. He's going to try to defend that uh, with all his units. Uh, the, the fact that he's escorting it with a warrior does give him a good chance of defending this. It's uh, Well, now he's protected by the river, but the second he moves on the, um, on the hill... Actually, is this going to be a first move? No. Okay. I was thinking maybe the scout of uh, Frizil is going to go immediately for the hill, but he's not. Yeah, we could see stuff like that. Um, but I think these players seem to be taking it slowly, taking it cautiously, weaseling their way around, wriggling around, trying to be careful, trying to make a, a slow and steady progress. Oh, big, big thing. Zulu actually has a promotion on that warrior. So if even if he gets hit, quite a few times he has a strong possibility of uh, getting out of um, a low hp he can promote and uh, get back his health that's a huge no. advantage if he needs it he can get a massive amount of health back up and not only yeah. that but also just make his unit better with the promotion yeah for sure the, the, God, the healing have... in this game can be so clutch oh, we do see observatories coming down from from uh, maya Oh, I'm curious about the pro position. Okay, so next to the Kokotar, he's going to get the plus two. Uh, he doesn't have any possible farms there. Uh, they did manage to take down one of the Geisates coming up from uh, goal. So very nice, very nice. They take out eyes. And this is this is what I was pointing out. They, they're never going to get to see Fez. Unless they reveal it somehow with the envoys, they're never going to get to see Fez. No, it's just, it's too far out of the way for them to realistically spot it. The only, yeah, and I mean, like, God, yeah. nobody has seen it. Incredible. Yeah, uh, not even Maya, which is a, <laughs> a bit frustrating. Uh, he definitely needs to send a scout there. <laughs> like we something... were talking about uh, him having an advantage, but he, he's not even going to go there. What is this? That is something I've noticed in a couple of the games I've played is um, past a certain point, people stop using their scouts for scouting and they start using them for like defense and war and stuff like that. Whereas when I was playing, yeah. I just kept scouting and I found like six or seven city states that no one else found. And I was able to just like sit on them and tell my team, OK, you take that one. And it was it just worked out really, really well for me. So there is kind of like I understand the need like scouts do fill a military role, but you, you got to yeah. have one scout always having a look around the map, you know? Yeah, for sure, for sure. That, that extra visibility, it's always called. Information is power in this game. Oh, unbelievable. I, I know there's games that uh, people people have sent me in save files, right, where their game has gone to hell. And all I do is, like, buy a caravel and go exploring, and I find city-states, and boom, their game is saved, you know? <clears throat> <laughs> nice. I also notice uh, Zulu, by the way, moving to the east. He might actually just... Uh, forget about the fountain youth city and he's gonna try to uh, settle uh, to the north of candy not bad not bad but still he's gonna need to, uh, the fourth settler soon yeah there we go he's going for the um, for the desert he still has a few tutus to work there uh, but he's not gonna get the uh, easy benefits from the fountain of youth uh, set three, uh, the extra plus three now i do see him needing to get somehow another three points and this is another one of the oh never, there we go he kind of put down uh this is another one of the challenges that you need to go for when it comes to the 2v2s era score getting those golden ages getting those golden ages is taxing yeah especially because like missing a single a single golden age can be a death knell for your empire like if you miss a monumentality you miss a penbrush and voice whew, you're yeah. playing from behind yeah, for sure. Uh, of course, India 
using that extra uh, movement of the arches, uh, trying to get the units as fast as possible to his opponent. We do have more arches in the build queues. His settler is going to go directly cold. Wow, that is such a photo settle from Fizil. Um, and there is there is a moment where Zulu actually is quite... Um, how do you call Ooh, it? Oh, blocking the Ekanda here. If he stays on that Ekanda, it could be a golden age block i wonder if he knows that he really needs to get that up get um, that blocked but, yeah 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 uh so you're saying there is a moment in the early game where zulu is vulnerable yes because be, uh, usually zulu wants to wait a little bit get his ikandas up get the production going get um uh, get to mercenaries for the core ability before that he just doesn't want to build units and if he does, his his whole sim is a bit uh, skewed. Um, just how the bonuses come for Zulu, you need to get the bad axe to get the best out of it and so on. It's just a bit of a hassle and you need time. And while for India, he doesn't need time. His bonus is just straight up from the beginning. He has that extra movement anyway. So he's trying to use that as much as possible from the beginning. But I, I still think this might be a mistake. Um... Zulu over here is gonna get uh, uh, is gonna get his sim up, and it's gonna be uh, a problem. And, yeah, and India Zulu... needs to do the same thing. That's what I mean. As in, India needs to get his sim up as well. What makes you think that it might be a mistake? Out of curiosity, um, to, to I, go for this level of aggression. I don't really believe uh, you can take out your opponent uh, early game even with um, uh, with such uh, advantages because it takes a bit too long to get to his cities uh, it's just from like look at the settler in, in of india on the coal tile from that city to lundi there are one two three four five tiles to go through even with the extra movement because forest is still gonna take two movement points and then he'll require two movement points, so it's still going to be six turns from that city. Not to mention all of the other cities before that. <laughs> like you, if you want to, if you want to get a unit from Padna, that's like twenty turns of resupply. It's too long. Yeah, it is a very, very long, and it is a very difficult supply line. But to be fair, do you have to kill your opponent, or do you just have to force him to slow down his his eco? Right. I uh, give a little bit of room yeah. for your goal player. Yeah, now, that's one of the things that has changed on Zulu, by the way. I'm not, I don't think in the base game uh, we have Zulu uh, getting the bonuses from his buildings. So if you take a look at uh, Zulu, uh, you do have uh, Shaka, uh, wait, uh, Ikandas actually, on Ikandas, Ikandas. Uh, they get plus two gold and plus one culture for each of the buildings uh, in the Ikandas. So you get barracks, boom, plus two gold, plus one culture. You get um, uh, an armory, you get another golden culture. Sure, you're going to get to pay for the maintenance, which is uh, going to be some gold, but it's still uh, levels of much better. Yeah, I mean, they if basically you... pay for themselves, and you're going to be in a better position yeah. than any other civ in the game who's doing similar stuff, right? Exactly, and uh, this is why Zulu is more prone to just spamming out those incandas and getting the bonuses out of them. The extra production for units, extra experience points are amazing as well. Um, also, if you couple that with free with the pen brush and voice, you get more culture and more gold for one single ikanda. It's just so good. Yeah, that's super good. <clears throat> Uh, the the potential for Zulu to snowball off of building a few Akandas is is really really high. Yeah, on strategic resources though, it looks like um, Frizil is on zero zero. We got Tamlin zero two. He's getting his iron up. Uh, he did put uh, there we go a mine on his iron, and I do see him actually getting uh, multiple opidums in the north. Didn't put one, that one in the south. The plus four. Uh, then on the other side, Zulu already has 17 iron with uh, Maya making a few horses. So it looks like early game is going to be a serious issue over here for them. They need to get uh, their uh, strategics up. Yeah, strategic resources are super key to the early game strategy. I mean, how do you, how can you go to war if you don't have a horse? You know what I mean? It's like the most fundamental yeah. important part of going to war. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, so tell me this. Zulu is on three cities. 
is the contain working? Should he be getting more cities? Is he playing correctly? Are, like, is he contained right now? I think at the moment they're playing for the contain. Uh, yes, and I think it's gonna. Uh, he's, they're not gonna contain them. I I, I want to say they they will contain them, but I I can't see that happening. Like he's at the moment, six cities are gonna happen for uh, Zulu. We right, add another so one to the north of Fulundi. North I'm, I'm of Fulundi. that prediction, fun. Michael. If he has anything less than six cities within the next half an hour, we're gonna we're gonna be pointing <laughs> and laughing at you. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh man! <laughs> Okay, it is I what mean, it is. Speaking of uh, speaking of six cities, Gaul now working on their fourth city. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, he needs to get as many cities out, and using that extra production that uh, he's starting to get. Look at that plus four opidum is uh, is gonna uh, expand quite fast. Uh, he did get religious settlements as a pantheon, so less production towards his uh, settlers. Well, that's quite nice. It speeds them up quite a bit. Uh, we have ever seen actually... India. What's going on with India? India's Pantheon. Oh man, God of the Forge. That is <laughs> very, very aggressive. Um, that, I mean, is the Vassal a, a classical unit? Uh, yes. That is a very strong declaration that he wants to go all in, or am I wrong? <laughs> yeah, it, it is definitely a statement. I don't know if he's going to go all in, but it's definitely a statement. I can't help but they, feel like he's in a precarious position because, like, he has a horse unique unit or, or a cavalry unique unit going up against a sieve with a spearman unique unit. Yeah, the thing is, the spearman does come uh, quite a bit later, right? So maybe maybe he's trying to nail the timing before, although I don't see that happening. I'm a bit surprised also of his uh, trader. Uh, uh, yes, he's going to probably go internals. But I was uh, thinking he's going to go the other way, like from Madurai to Panna, not this way. But anyway, we'll see. Maybe uh, he's not going to go Magnus here, even though I think Magnus should be a thing in Madurai. Oh, actually, look at the chops. Now, now, now that I think of it, um, Magnus going in Madurai, he's going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 possible chops over there, or even more if he goes third ring. Yeah, that's, 11 uh, chops that's is a lot a of production. massive amount. Like, just yeah. insane. Yeah. I, I can't help but feel that we will see Magnus. Ooh, an archer. Ooh, actually, it looks like India is winning the battle around Alundi. Um, These Zulu archers going down quite low on health. Yeah, but uh, there's only one archer there, though, remaining. I mean, that Zulu one archer just... can do a lot of work. Yeah, it can. I think uh, next turn we might actually see one of the Zulu archers uh, dying. This is just... I'm a, a bit sad about this though. He's uh, using some desperate messages to keep uh, Zulu back and he's just managing to lose the units and at the same time uh, Zulu getting some extra promotions on his while he is taking out the units of India. It's yeah, a bit, for sure. Uh... It's a bit problematic, but we do have Varus coming out from Padna and Jabalpur. And uh, Those Vladimir feel is six like of... very early Varus. Yeah. Oh, I missed this. I missed this campus. Look at the plus six campus of Ulundi. Ulundi, Ulundi. Oh my goodness. That is three reefs. Oh my God. Look how many horses he has as well. That's a very, very nice campus. That's going to really, really help him. But is that going to be enough? The Varu are coming. Yeah, that's the problem. We'll see. But maybe maybe he can manage to uh, do this. Ooh, okay. Wow, he was able to shoot over that hill? What the hell? Uh, excuse me, Civ 6 developers. Uh, this man just shot over a hill? Oh, yeah, because of the extra elevation of the forest. Yes. He can see it. You can shoot it. That is insane. I didn't even know that was a thing. I thought it was the other way around. I thought there was a forest that made you less visible. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> re re <laughs> regardless, it does look like India's little bit of a har <clears throat> harassment has been rebuffed. And now he's in full retreat to uh, try to get his units out of there. Yeah, I think Frizzle is in... Uh, actually, 
quite a bit of trouble here. Uh, and I'm curious about his uh, first governor. If it's Madurai Magnus, uh, that will definitely be him all inning into this. And I think he would be uh, doing well uh, getting a builder there. Otherwise, uh, not so sure he's going to be able to do that much against uh, Zulu. Yeah, those... Um, I would say um, the unique units come with uh, what metal training or whatever it's called. Uh, not casting. How do you call it? Uh, uh, military, military tactics. Tactics. Yeah, for the for the yeah. MP, I think. So I don't think Vladimir is going to be that late on them. I think by the time he's going to need to fight a few virus, but uh, not going to um, with the uh, plus six campus that he has coming out from Ulundi. Uh, he's probably going to go Pingala next. That should give him enough science to get to military tactics before uh, India can take any city. The second he pops those uh, impies out, it's over. Like that, that's that's it. Uh, that's outtaking the hard outtaking the Baros. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's over for those viruses. It's not necessarily game over, but I think things yeah. will get very difficult. I think that's why India is going so hard on the virus. He wants to do damage now. He can't wait much longer. Yeah. My uh, stream is saying, don't underestimate Vladimir. I, I mean, like, hey, I'm not underestimating any of these players. I'm not predicting their downfall. I'm just trying to describe yeah, how difficult yeah. the game will be for them, okay? You be careful in there, chat, okay? I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> calling us out, calling us out for predicting doom and gloom. Uh, what, what did the... Um, oh, God of Krasman coming out from Zulu. He's going to get the extra production on horses. So what did Maya get? Maya did go for fertility rights. Okay, interesting. Fertility rights again. Uh, people must be really, really liking that Pantheon because I, I just don't see the farms for it. Um, is it is it on all farm resources? Uh, well, yes, I think so. So was there something missing? Cotton no, I think you get like maize. Yeah, yeah, it should be all. It should be all. Uh, is there I'm anything more than that? No. I'm genuinely surprised because I only see what like one maize here, one maize here, one cattle, two cattle. Like that's not a whole lot of tile tiles to go for that. Maybe they just didn't have better pantheons available. Uh, a lot of the players, th that actually has been my question a lot of the times when I see players picking uh, this Pantheon. Uh, they do believe the builder giving you the extra tempo of the, the beginning. It's worth it even if you don't have those resources to get the extra food. Oh, that's actually, you're right. I forgot about the free builder. The free builder completely changes yeah. that equation. Getting a free builder that early can be a game changer. Yeah, with some farms, you see how he's putting the farms next to his um, observatories, getting some extra adjacency on them. Um, he's he's going to get some improvements here. Some, uh, I guess it's going to be fine. I guess it's going to be fine. I, I would have loved to see, of course, a lot more plantations and maybe uh, something like Goddess of the Fest Goddess of Festivals, but yeah. eh, not not that many. Not, it, it's not worth. It's not worth. Yeah, I mean, like in the immortal words of that philosopher, you can't always get what you want. And uh, un unfortunately, there just wasn't that many plantations for Maya this game. Yeah, I do have to point out India kept on building units while Zulu stopped. Yeah, Zulu has taken a bit of time here to get some infrastructure. I think you're buying on. Is this just a, a sort of reflection of the state of the game that India has to do damage now, whereas Zulu has time? Well, just click a unit from India, from Jabalpur, and then right-click somewhere on the lands of uh, Zulu, and you're gonna you're gonna see how much time he actually has. For that. Oh my God! Eight, nine turns just to get beside <laughs> yeah. Ulundi, dude. He's got all day. He's got all the time he's ever gonna need. He's not even in danger. Yeah. The, the bad thing for Zulu is Fountain of Youth. That positioning actually allows all of the units of India to just stroll in, get the bonuses, and keep on attacking. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and like, it really is hard to overstate just how much healing this gives you, especially if you're on the offensive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're watching... Uh those uh, Varus up close over here amazing uh, units amazing armor on them 
Yeah, they're really, really beautiful. Actually, I got to turn off my yield mode so people can see them. Yeah. Uh, the graphics of the Varu, the kind of reminds me of Age of Empires. I don't know. Did you ever play uh, Age of Empires with the little? Uh... I did. I did. Yeah, yeah, where they had the elephants with the dudes on the back in the newer expansions. <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't play uh, the last version. I played that uh, the second or something you know, back okay. in the day. No, I don't I don't know the last version. But uh, there was uh, I I believe Excalibur or something a movie made uh, with uh, Varus coming oh, up in the front like in the first scenes. Yes, that movie was so good where they have like the Welsh music playing and the Varus like yeah, smashes yeah, the castle. Yeah, exactly. Oh shit, that was so good. Hold on, I need to go watch that <laughs> clip now. I'm going to mute my stream up here right back. <laughs> that is amazing. World of Throne coming up uh, from Zulu. We do have uh, more units coming up from Frizil. A lot of horses. And it looks like he is uh, aware that this is going to be an all-in. Uh, we do have also Tamlin. I'm trying to go for uh, quite a bit of, uh, quite a few of these uh, swordsmen. He might actually go against the Mohenio Daro and take it out. Uh, I do want to see if uh, he's going to try to uh, get his uh, military towards Zulu. Uh, two versus one over here would be quite... Uh, taxing on both of them the um, gold generation is going to be a problem we got already frizzle on minus four tamlin 13 gold well Ooh, look yeah. at that production double production almost on tamlin 51 51 is a very respectable amount i think you're right though there is a definite disparity between the two teams with maya and zulu just having that extra gold that team india and gold does not have um, so what's the story with these swordsmen? What do you think the plan is with these? Are these defensive? Are they offensive? Is he looking to fight with them? Varos? Uh, oh, sorry, offensive. The, the, the swordsmen from... The swordsmen. I'm, uh, at the moment, I don't know. Like, that, if they want to go 2v1, they need to go against Zulu, so they need to be offensive. Uh, on the east side, we got Mohenia Jodaro ripe for the picking, and they need to take that as well. Yeah, I think you're right. I think these swordsmen could be heading towards Mohenjo Dara. I could be, it could be that that purple grape of a city state could be looking to get chomped here in a few minutes. Yeah, and of course uh, that would put the pressure on Maya. Maya is trying to sim, and you do see getting uh, settlers out. Uh, he needs to feel the pressure of his opponent. the The problem is uh, they're kind of equal when it comes to the science, and Maya does have a lot more gold. Actually, the whole economy of uh, CIS is more, much, much better at the moment, and it's gonna get better uh, the, when the next age kicks in. Oh, it did kick in. So there we go. We got uh, Penbrush and Voice on them, and look how uh, how good it is. Yeah, Penbrush and Voice coming in extremely clutch here. Maya also opting to go for a triple expansion here. Three settlers coming out of all three cities, going for the Amoeba strat, going through Mitosis, doubling the size of his empire now uh, in the next few turns. Yeah, we, we do have a bit of an issue here with um, uh, India, actually. I got I to gotta point out, he didn't make that many districts. Because of that, he's not benefiting from Penbrush and Voice. Uh, so he's on 10 science and 8 culture. Uh, didn't even go for monuments. I don't think he has monuments. So, no, yeah, he doesn't have monuments. In, in yeah, the lack yeah, of monuments, it's... the lack of Penbrush and Voice. Ooh, that actually feels really scary for him. Like there's no, I don't think there's a way out of this. Like if he doesn't manage to do the attack on, on uh, Zulu and take him out, or at least to put him down to two cities or something like that, or one city, this is it. I think. Uh, well, I, I I know we shouldn't be talking about doom and gloom, but it kind of feels like this is a an all-in maneuver and losing one of your teammates uh, to irel in turn 60 it's going to be extremely taxing for the well, uh, for let's sleep i i do feel like this if india manages to trade out with the zulu and make both of them irrelevant i do kind of like the mayan's position over the gauls i feel like maya might be able to take it so if that's what he's thinking if he's going to go all in here i think he might give his team a chance to win if he can do damage to the Zulu. Enough damage to make them irrelevant as well. Yeah, look at Zulu go. He's one turning that in Kanda from the capital. Got a horseman out, so he has a classical unit defense on his city center. Uh, got a few units in a line towards the north. A lot of archers. And uh, I do have to point out the defense against Varu is, of course, having a classical unit in front of you and archers behind. You need a lot of archers to shoot into those uh, Varus. Otherwise, your units are just going to 
watch it and that's it because they don't have enough uh, strength to attack into it no uh, on... for sure Varu incredibly good against any melee units yeah I want to point out something check out the vision of Vladimir and then look at the all of the position of the Indian army Ooh, that entire Indian army just on the edge of the fog of war. This is incredibly good positioning here from Friesel. Yeah, he's trying to use that uh, extra bit of uh, shadow to go all in. And the Zulu just found out what's going on. That's right. The Zulu is in the find out stage of fucking around. And here it comes. The <laughs> He's getting out of there. He's <laughs> like, no, I ain't having this. No, bro. He's getting the hell out of there. The archers are come forward. That warrior almost gets completely smashed in the first turn of hostilities. Things are settling back down. There are archers in Nodondaka, ready to shoot back. The, the horseman and the Varu is moving into position. Oh, I don't like the positioning on the Zulu army here. Yeah, uh, it, it kind of feels like Endo Dakusuka uh, might actually fall uh, when those Varus get uh, so close to it. Uh, uh, it will be a bit too late. And the, the big thing about the Varus is they apply a minus five penalty in strength around themselves around the units around enemy units or around themselves to enemy units i mean yes uh, so it's not only them having more strength in the base they also apply that penalty. it's very hard unit to deal with yeah very for hard sure unit. i mean like you just take a look at a horseman right instead of being a 36 combat strength unit against a 30 uh, uh sorry a 40 combat strength unit it's a 31 combat strength unit against a, it just becomes very very difficult to deal with those elephants yeah the numbers... it's hard from afar to attack into the var let alone next to it yeah for sure for sure it's incredibly difficult um, that's that's the power of things like the Varu and the great thing is the Varu doesn't even need to attack it just needs to stand there on the front line and it's doing that yeah, we got some more horses moving in of course uh, Idia keeping those arches uh, in the, on the one three tiles is going to allow him to shoot from uh, high above Ooh. and there we go one archer goes down that archer got giga smashed it didn't even stand a chance. He is defending his encampment with a horseman here, but I can't help but feel like the noose is beginning to close around Nadondakusuka. Yeah, and Dondaku. Yeah, this is hard. This is very hard. To pronounce. We'll just, you know what? We'll just call it Suka from now on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we do have uh, Madre coming up with uh, more of these horses. Of course, uh, he has a few builders uh, that popped from uh, Jabalpur. One next to Madurai. They could uh, try to go for the pit, uh, for the chops over here. I see he wants more gold and he's going to try to improve the banana in the meantime. Um, indeed, Mohenjo Daro is uh, going to be on the receiving end of the Gallic Empire. The gold yeah, somehow right. did get more science. How, how, oh my God. All of these geothermals are allowing him to get that science going. Yeah, I'm genuinely okay. surprised because he's been settling on those geothermals, but now he's making use of them to crank out a ton of science. Where is his science coming from? Is Wait, he doesn't even have any campuses. Pingala? I think, so extra culture allowing him to get Pingala faster, the plus one, and then penbrush and voice like for the culture and then extra science. You're right. Where is that science, extra science coming from? Uh, city states, maybe? Did he get something in Roma city state? No. Damn, I mean, people are just pulling signs from nowhere right now. Well, I, I think he's getting about six. Population, I guess. Yeah, population. I think it's, yeah. it's a combination of he settled on a couple of those things. He has iron. He has a couple of geothermals. He just finished the campus. I think he just has a strong early game science game just because of his positioning. There's nothing particularly like special that he's doing. He's just in a good position with regards to his science. Yeah. Well, I do see those photos uh, did manage to put the city of... Uh... Zulu in siege and I do see Victor going in we might uh, see Vladimir try to go for the walls here uh, but he's uh, first going for iron working a uh, bit of an issue here the city or I should say the horses of India cannot actually attack into the city center they take way too much damage uh, and uh, he's just trying to position the Varus to defend against a possible counter attack those horses already feeling the pressure of the Varus yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. But here's the thing. You don't even necessarily have to capture a city in order to make it useless, right? You could just put massive pressure on it and uh, he's essentially taken the city out 
of his enemy's empire, at least on a temporary basis. Whether or not he can actually break the city, that will decide whether or not that city, you know, gets taken out of the empire on a permanent basis. Yeah, he, he does need to keep on attacking into it, though. Like, he, unfortunately, if you get walls, there's no unit from India able to beat, breach through the walls. So he needs right now to take out that city. He, he, even if he sacrifices a few of his horses, he needs to take it out. It's very hard, especially since Zulu did manage to get a great general. That's one of the perks that he's going to have, an extra plus five. Equals out the Varus. Uh, oh, there we go. Took out uh, an archer here. And this is the moment India needs to attack. There we go. India, the, the city is 28 strength. That was a massive, massive mistake coming up from uh, Zulu. Uh, and not the fact that he attacked into the archer, the fact that he didn't shift enter back into his city. So he gets the extra defense on the garrison. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Victor is just an incredible guy for defending your cities. Uh, what is yeah. your feeling right now? Do you think the city of... Uh, Kakasuka is going to go down? Yes, looks like 100% uh, is going to go down. There's no, uh, not even with the new swordsman coming up from Zulu, uh, he, can't, he can't keep it. And uh, that's a massive win. India just sacrificed his early game to take this away from Vladimir, and it looks like he's going to take it away. Yeah, especially because, like we were talking about earlier, Zulu is the kind of save that really likes to get into that mid-game, right? You get to mercenaries, you crank out Impi, you get all those key pieces of infrastructure online. And it looks like, like you predicted, that the India has managed to exploit that early game window of vulnerability and put the Zulu on the back foot. With such a big distance between them, you've seen how many turns it took for the Faros to get here. Like uh, the, the biggest thing here, actually was the visibility the fact that the army of uh, chandra gupta managed to get behind those forests and there was no unit from um, uh, zulu to see what's going on behind that one line the trench of the forest he got surprised he didn't predict that his opponent will be so fast on him with so many units yeah, yeah, yeah. The the lightning speed attack by the elephants having thundered through and the city has fallen. I think you're dead right. I think that line of forest there was giving him like the perfect cover. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, amazing how the players use that little bit of a, a terrain advantage. Yeah, it just shows you like how deeply they think about the game. They're not only thinking about, okay, what do I see? But it's like, okay, what does my opponent see? Where should I stand so he can't see me coming? Really, really fun game of cat and mouse that they're working on here. Now, the thing that terrifies me for the Zulu is that Fountain of Youth. Because a lot of these Indian units are hurt. But if he can get them to step onto that Fountain of Youth, he will be able to get them recharged incredibly quickly. And that will be very scary for Zulu. Oh, for sure. Uh, well, the biggest thing is, um, you know, the mechanic of the hills, always, it's quite different between your land, uh, your city center, uh, neutral land and opponent's land. Well, Fountain of Youth just makes uh, you're going to be in your opponent's land and you're going to get the same hills as in your land. <laughs> yep, that's the power it's of it. It's, it's so good. Honestly, it's it's a little bit busted sometimes because plus 10 like if it was plus 5 healing it would still be good but the fact that it's plus 10 makes it kind of crazy yeah uh, another thing happening by the way Gold did manage to take Mohenjo Daro and it uh, looks like um, Maya is uh, forced to do some units of his own it's going to put pressure on their economy Frizil did manage to uh, get his economy on a baseline with 2 uh, and I do see him uh, managing to put down an encampment couldn't get uh general out though and uh yeah he did he did raise the city of zulu now this mm. is this is a problem i think uh, at this moment uh, india cannot do anything more with his units uh he needs to somehow figure out a way to um, keep on pressuring uh, zulu from the north and from the east even though honestly i i don't see a way in like way too many units from Zulu with a general they're gonna have um, advantages Zulu did manage to get promotions on his archers even level 2 archers against uh, Varus are gonna be insanely strong so I'm at the moment I would say India you need to get three more series out and try to uh, sim because this is a problem big problem 
Yeah, it is a big problem. I mean, his science is falling behind. But here's the thing. He he traded his units for a kill on a city. So I feel like he's in a pretty okay position. Um, yeah. You know, he, he got kill value. But I don't even think this is really going to phase the Zulu. I mean, they're just immediately went and started building two more settlers. True, true. I, it will probably matter quite a bit uh, that Vladimir was uh, slowed down. Uh, and I do have to point out it might be everything for Tamlin. Because look at Tamlin. He's 89 production. He has more production than the enemy team combined. Jesus, yeah, he's got more production than God right now. Pretty much anything he wants to build, he can build. Oppidum's in every city. And this is just this is just Gaul 101, right? No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, as long as you have okay Oppidum's, you're going to be top production. Yeah. Well, I do see him getting a few more swordsmen out. I'm really curious if he's going to try to go for something like um, you know, Men at Arms here. Uh, the biggest issue would be the gold. They just don't have the gold. Uh, that's uh, he's gonna need to hard build them, and if he's thinking of just throwing uh, units against his opponent, he's he might be right. Um, but at the same time, you gotta take into account the mine plus three from the Mutal trade next to his uh, well, capital city around six tiles. He has an extra plus three, and also uh, I do have to point out Maya didn't shine that much in the science or the culture tree at, at the moment. He's not booming. No, he's not. He's not booming whatsoever. He was definitely not born in the 1950s because he is not a boomer. Yeah. Um, is this a case of, like, they just have so much gold as well. Like, I don't know. It, it just feels like they're kind of, the, the, the Gaul team, right? They have the production to, to attack here. But I feel like, the gold is just where they're going to struggle. Like, they, I don't know if they're going to be able to upgrade, do timing attacks and stuff like that. Yeah, timing. That, I, this, this is the struggle of the 2v2s. You, you don't have an extra player to give you the to gold. To feed you gold, you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah like sacrifice it, himself. It, it, in the last game, uh, Synth told me that their entire team was feeding gold to Noob, and that's why he had 500 culture. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, that one turn they cc'd his culture jumped up to 872 jesus christ <laughs> 872 wow i think that's a that must be a record that that that, that must be a record yeah i think i think we need to implement uh, some age of empires tournament rules uh no more slinging you're not allowed to give gold before <laughs> turn 50 or something um, oh, sneaky Indian horse got onto that uh, amazing campus of Ulundi and he's oh, going to pillage it. That is a Plus huge 12. loss. That's, that's almost half his science. Oh my God. Okay. That's, that's all of India's science. He's basically taking out his entire civilization <laughs> science right there. <laughs> yeah. And I do see he's not giving up on this. He's getting more Varus out. He's just going to... He did manage to get the Great General and he's going to move it uh, towards the west side. Now putting more pressure on Zulu's units. Uh, I do... I am actually quite curious how he's going to use these eastern armies. I do like the fact that he basically pulled all of Zulu's armies with him. Forcing Zulu to get away from his cities while he attacked him on the other side. Frizil here just using Shun Tzu tactics in, right in front of us. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he just he just steps away and then like a vacuum, he pulls all the enemy units outside the empire, outside the clean, safe borders. And I think it, it kind of looks like Zulu is fighting around that fountain of youth. They want to make sure no one else can get the benefit from that plus 10 healing. Yeah. Uh, two bits of information here. The uh, generals uh, only work on um, uh, uh, so if you have two generals only one will add the damage uh, on the other side uh, varus only apply the minus five against enemy units not your own units a that's few questions right. that i had in the in the chat yeah it, it used to be that you could stack great generals if you upgraded a unit while it had a great general in its area of influence because of the way that units preserved their upgrades it was kind of wonky um, yeah. I'm pretty sure when the game first came out, Great General stacked, but it was kind of busted. Yes, imagine Macedon. <laughs> oh Stacking more generals and the damage from an extra general. Oh my god, that was just uh, insane. 
Those were the days, man. The wild, wild west yeah. of Civ Six multiplayer <laughs> back in the day. Yes. Oh my. God. Yeah. Rise and fall was just incredible, and of course the first, uh, the first version was also good. It took us a while to get to this point, though. Quite, I quite mean, a while. It took us quite a while to get here, but man, what a place to be. The incredible balance, the incredible players, the incredible yeah. passion from the community about the game. Um, I want to ask you about this this uh, trench that's being dug between Mohenjo Daro and Chichen Itza. Battle lines are being drawn. Both players seeming to want to fortify up the front line rather than go all out on the offensive. And is this just a case of neither player wanting to be caught off guard, so they're building just enough stuff to hold the front line? I think Tamily actually wants to go on the offensive, and I honestly I want to point out the Hulche. The Hulche here is basically like an early crossbow, and it does so much damage. Like it's now base twenty eight. You get a military alliance plus five. You get the Mutal Trade another plus three. You're gonna get the Governor Victor another plus three, and then whenever he's gonna find a weak unit, he's gonna do another plus five. The what? It's like. 45 strength uh, early archer in which you just don't invest that much yeah the whole J is just an incredibly good turtling unit which kind of makes me a little bit concerned like um well i guess the gaul does have the king of the eberones the fortified defense this just feels like the clash of titans both of these saves have incredibly good combat bonuses and incredibly good units Another quick question here. Uh, does the God of the Sea stack with Liang's fishery? It does not uh, because the fishery is not an actual resource. <gasps> oh, oh. Look at Ulundi. Oh, 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 oh. How did he get here? How oh my God. was Frizil allowed to get right in the on the doorstep of his opponent? I have absolutely no idea. But I mean, that is what? Two elephants and three horsemen knocking down the door of Ulundi? That's very scary. And there's another two units in on Dini threatening his district. This is a very scary position to be in for the Zulu player. Yeah. Especially because he was working on settlers. Look at the settler being forced to run south to the tundra. Yeah, that, that's just nasty. And oh my God, you're, you're going to laugh at me. Oh no. Why? What happened? What happened? I mean, I made a prediction. Zulu six cities. <laughs> yeah that's right true it's true chat point and laugh at michael do it <laughs> point and laugh no. uh, in interesting development in adwatica i want you to take a look at that and tell me what you think of that statue of zeus this is first of all a deny uh, they want to take away that uh, powerful ability of zulu to pump out a lot of um in peace uh, and i do like that he's gonna get it for himself uh, but i don't think maya is gonna go against him uh, that uh, that hard honestly i think neither of them can push into each other here and i'm i can't believe again india was allowed to get his units on ulundi the the, the powerful thing is that i do want to point out ulundi is not gonna get under siege he would need a boat to put it under siege or a unit in the water. And I guess that's the that's the big question. Is Frizzle going shipbuilding? No. Okay. He's going mm. mathematics civil service. See, we, we often talk about the downsides of being coastal, but there is one really big upside, and that is how difficult it can be to put a coastal city under siege, especially early yeah. on. Yeah. And of course, we got more units coming up from India. The fact that he's keeping a hold of Ulundi would uh, would put him uh, back quite a bit. I think uh, Frizzil here just needs to keep up the pressure. And of course, uh, we do see Tamlin putting cities to the west. I'm very surprised how uh, Tamlin did want to go against Maya instead of uh, going against uh, Vladimir. If Imagine having seven swordsmen coming against Zulu right now. That yeah. would have been a bit too much for him to handle. I could have think that I think that could have spelled his doom, but I mean, if he sent those seven swordsmen over there, uh, maybe the six seven swordsmen from Maya would have been able to take out Mohenjo Daro, would have been able to push in and stick their knives in the in the soft underbelly of the Gaul. You know, it, it's hard to know. I think yeah. maybe the players are thinking that you know India has this handled. I'll handle Gaul or I'll, I'll handle Maya, but perhaps that's what they're thinking in their heads. Yeah. 
for sure. And uh, the bad the bad thing here is uh, that lack of goal. That's the only thing holding them from uh, doing amazing work against uh, Maya. Uh, if uh, the goals does manage to get to his um, military Manitimes. training and manage um, many times, yeah, many times, uh, that's going to be amazing. I mean, you do say that gold isn't very good for them, but I mean, if we take a look at the gold yields, somehow Team India and Gaul have managed to bring their gold levels up above the levels of the Maya and the Zulu. Yeah. Well, losing a city will do that to you. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Uh, <laughs> did anybody know that if you lose a city, it'll hurt your economy? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, I, of course, I think most of the units here of India did get those um, Fountain of Youth bonuses and they're getting quite uh, powerful here. I am actually quite curious if he's going to try to get the Ikandas down in the meantime. Uh, I don't think Zulu is that far away. He's five turns away from getting uh, military training and that's going to allow him to get the, the impies. That's when I think the war over here is going to turn south really, really badly for uh, India. Yeah, and I, you know, it's got to be a terrifying feeling to be in in India's position, knowing that there is a countdown to extinction. The 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 blueprint to Armageddon has been set. When those impies come out, I think, yeah, I think all of these cavalry units, their days are going to be numbered. So many units from the goals here. I'm actually extremely surprised of how many units Goal did want to put against uh, Maya. I I think. Maya was just ready for this. If Maya wasn't ready for this, oh my God, Zulu, the uh, sorry, uh, Gold would have walked in Chichen Itza and uh, made whatever he wanted with that city. Yeah, he would have turned chicken Chichen Itza into chicken pizza. He would have eaten that up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, but... oh, oh my God, Ulundi! Oh man, <laughs> twenty-eight health. He needs Vladimir to get a... made the same mistake. What, it's what, unbelievable. What mistake did he make? Sorry. He got a horse out of the city. So that city dropped from like 48 strength to 33. Oh, no. Yeah. Freezing immediately when that happened, smacked it down. Well, at least you can't raise a capital. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That is like yeah, maybe that, the that biggest is cope. That is true. <laughs> That's like the biggest cope I've ever said in my life. <laughs> at least he can't raise my capital, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all going to be fun. Wait, GG. Oh, what? GG. Unbelievable. Oh, India gosh. does it. How did this happen? It's. Wow, like he could have gotten that back. I honestly didn't think they're going to CC because of this. I, I, I thought they would fight it out because he, he was, man, one move, it's... one mistake, one oh, misclick. Oh. That's the difference between winning and losing. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Wow. Wow. Oh, oh my God. This actually happened. Well, this is too wins today for um, uh, Le Slip uh, when it comes to the 2v2s. They won the previous game and uh, I think we can talk a little bit with them. Let me actually see where they are in the chat. Oh, they're not in the channels. I see uh, Le Slip sure. did not join the channels. I mean, if we don't see them, we can talk about the, uh, the the positions here. We can look at the buildings constructed. We could look. Uh, do you think there's any important data here that we'd like to look at? I mean, look at the units killed. Shaka killing 15 units. Uh, and India losing. <laughs> India lost like 16 units. This was a bloodbath of a game. Yeah, a uh, big question over here uh, from my chat is, is what does CIF CIS CIS stand for? CIF CIS is um, CIF uh, Commonwealth of Independent States. It's actually the former uh, Soviet Union states, I believe. Yeah, it's kind of like um, uh, like the British Empire. They have the Commonwealth, which is like all the, you know, the former countries that were kind of in the British yeah. Empire. Uh, for the old sort of Russian sphere of influence, they call it the Commonwealth of Independent States, I believe. Oh, it's they're asking for a debrief. They, they're asking if we can get a debrief. Uh, I don't know where they are. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. I'll jump in with them. I'll say hi. Uh... I'm asking where they are. I'm just waiting. Uh, big, big, 
timeline over here getting that amazing production i think uh, toppled the uh, universe for uh, maya you see him uh, attacking right now he's uh he's actually pushing through the mayan defenses oh wow okay i didn't see him uh, actually doing that are they are they playing on i wonder or is this uh bots oh okay they're then in the cfcs channel i'm gonna pull it there Uh, yeah, go ahead and pull this off. Like, how how did you pull this off? I don't know. With, with Chandra? With Chandra, with uh, the big goals over here, getting the economy. <laughs> how is this possible? I, I don't know. I, what when, is possible? Uh, I didn't understand. At, uh, at turn uh, maybe uh, 30, I was like, uh, oh my god, uh, I won't pass uh, with Chandra. I can't pass. Yeah. But then uh, I attack on the right, then on the left, and he didn't uh, follow me, and I was more. Oh, you had more units. I have more units, yes. I see. Yeah. Oh man, that was I. Wow. Wow. Yeah, there, I, there was honest... multiple times when he was pushing. I was like, he's never gonna break this Zulu player. Yes. He's gonna be I was fine. like two. <laughs> I was, and then. I was... And then out of nowhere, you have like his entire capital surrounded by elephants and horses. Like, yes. How did this happen? <laughs> I don't know. You didn't uh, have uh, an out, I think. Yeah, that was incredible. That was the ex the extra movement for Chandra Gupta, right? It allowed you yes. to move uh, Very good. the unit. And uh, Tamlin. Yeah? Goals, bro. Now, what? are you planning this out? How are you planning this out with the goals? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I just uh, did irrigation uh, fast. And uh, okay. as you can see, uh, I wanted to go on Arena free promote uh, in third, uh, in third uh, governor to, to get gold. Yeah, I think it was the best option, but I don't. Uh, and with the golden age, uh, gold were pretty, pretty okay. Pretty okay. I don't, and, and I don't need to, to buy mm, a lot of tiles because I'm, I'm gold so. Just a culture bomb uh, with my uh, with my mind, and it's okay. Yeah, yeah, that helped you out massively. Did you have enough gold stacked up to upgrade those uh, mana tiles? Because they're extremely expensive. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, the turn where the CC, I had um, um, what's the name? The card we can uh, which allows me to to reduce. Yeah, right. To reduce. Yeah, uh, he asked me to pledge. Uh... So I had. Uh, Forward. Damn. Uh -huh. Okay. That and was I enough. Think, and I think I have enough production to to just pour the um, just pour the behind. Yeah. Manatam Manatam in my my uh, my free first city. Uh, it's uh, two turns. Pretty okay. <clears throat> oh, that's that, actually very good. That's yeah. really really fast. So but, uh, I have a good. Uh, I have a. a good, not a good land, but uh, almost. How did you guys feel about playing um, India against uh, Shaka? Because I feel like that's a matchup. If you don't kill Shaka early, he just auto wins with Impi, right? Yes, but that's why I take Chandra because Chandra is a very early attacker. So yeah, because just rush him. He, he, he said to me, "I want to play Chandra." <laughs> 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 okay. And, and I want to make like virus. Him. But uh, otherwise, we, we might have gone on uh, Byzantium. Yeah. Or Vietnam, right, right. I think. Cause... It was Byzantium or Vietnam, uh, otherwise. Because I thought you must have like absolutely gigantic balls to build a, a heavy cavalry unique unit save against a, 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 an anti cavalry unique unit save. But I guess yeah, it's yeah, all but... about tempo. Yeah. You hit him too early. Yeah, but uh, Shaka isn't, isn't the save we with, with does uh, the mass science fastly. So I think it's fine. Fair, that makes sense. But yes, really if, if I don't kill, if, if I don't kill him uh, between uh, like uh, turn uh, fifty, I'm dead uh, after. Yeah. And anyway, uh... so I just all in on him. Mm. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. I mean, like the all-in paid off, although it looked really shaky at multiple points. Um, what made <laughs> you choose to pl pick the goal? Is the goal like... is unkillable. 
Is there yeah, any killable? I think it's like Shaka, it's a good scaling and uh, even in military, so and uh, yeah, it's unkillable, uh, you can kill someone. Uh, I mean, you can freeze him with uh, zero gold, so it's pretty also, insane. In... So yeah, because of... you get the free culture bombs and you get like some uh, production. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really good. It's a, it's a lot of culture, uh, so I think gold is a, is a pretty good pick in this kind of situation. Because you can, you can always do gold uh, uh, one way or one other. So I had uh, Reyna, but uh, if, if I must, uh, I can go on a... Uh, on, um, Commercial hub, so in the third, uh, third district, I think yep. it's fine. Yeah, because you just had so much production, so much science, and then like the only thing you needed then was the gold, and it was like just yeah, coming down the pipeline. Like that was my spawn. Sick. Because the Thief aren't strong enough in uh, in very early, so they can't. Uh, I mean, Maya must start, but but uh, with a builder. So he, ca he, he can't um, uh, annoy me in early. So I just uh, I just uh, do my builder too, and it's fine. Uh, once uh, once I once I work some uh, mine. Uh, oh, that's true, right? Because he doesn't have the tempo to like. Because I mean, you're both, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Ma cool. Maya, who doesn't start bu builder, is uh, uh, will get. His his uh, settler will uh, will go out so late. It's a uh, is is uh, other cities will uh, take so much time to do go. It's terrible. So he's he's uh, forced to do that. And uh, Zulu might be uh, a problem in, in early, especially if he took uh, um, sure. Pantheon, uh, which gives uh, one uh, one point on uh, on general pattern on uh, on compound. I don't remember. Got a board and plunder. Yeah. Yeah. This he didn't, so it was fine. Yes. Uh, we could uh, we could take uh, general freely. Thanks to him to do not take uh, to not take this pantheon because I I don't I was not sure to to get uh, general with Chandra. Yeah, true. You would have gotten all of them. Mm -hmm. well, uh, we were uh, in a pretty good spot, I think. Pretty... It, it, it looks like. You're uh, coming up uh, first in the 2v2 standing soon. You have 190 points now without this game, so you're going to pop over uh, in the first spot. You are coming up with a very strong team in this CCC. Yeah, <laughs> we, are, we are the second team of the D1, uh, the French D1, guys. Uh, very nice, very nice. In, uh, how do you feel about the tournament? Uh, how do you feel uh, you're going to get the results in uh, tomorrow? I don't know, <laughs> because the result of the CCC just end uh, like uh, one uh, one hour. Uh, just the result, the result are um, I don't know, like say um, are, are are very close. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. At the moment, it's everything is very close. <laughs> yes, it's like top top five is like a hundred points. Be but nothing is played uh, between the Sunday, uh, the four before I think. It's the the climax. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for allowing us to stream. It was amazing, amazing to see the game over here. We were holding our seats, holding on to our seats to watch what was going on between you and um, Zulu over there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Thanks for letting us observe. It was an absolute pleasure to watch you guys play. And uh, good luck and have no fun problem. in the next part of the tournament. I hope Thanks. you have amazing Thank games. Thank you. Bye bye. Good uh, cast bon for, for you. <laughs> bon nuit. Bon nuit. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Adios, amigos. Uh. <laughs> yes. <laughs>so uh okay there we have it we this is a 2v2 what, what did, did everybody think of a 2v2 much faster um, right much faster <laughs> i really like the 2v2 style of game it's much much faster people get into battles really really quickly i i like the 2v2 i like it when it's one team against another team and i like these small maps i feel like the big maps you know it's hard to get a fight going people don't fight they kind of tiptoe around each other they pussyfoot they avoid yeah. each other whereas this, this is fun right this is right out the gate there's action immediately 
Exactly. This is this is amazing. That's why I really wanted us to to take a look at uh, one of them. Uh, I do have to point out, and this is a big question because tomorrow we're gonna have uh, two finals, one after the other, the two v two finals and the four v four finals. It's a big question for you now, Potato. Do you think we should go for another game? Because another game sh starting now would mean another five seven hours at least, five to six hours at least. I'm gonna be honest with you. I fall asleep. <laughs> I didn't get much sleep last night. We should. Um, so, I, I mean, you could do another game, but I think I'm going to go take a nap and then uh, work a bit on my YouTube channel. <laughs> I got some <laughs> okay. videos. I promised people that I would release more Terra Invicta videos, and I meant to release another one there about two hours ago, but I'll, I'll have to get it out soon. It's it's all good. I think we should actually keep our energy for the finals tomorrow. We're gonna have. Well, let me actually uh, take a look at the uh, schedule here. Two v two finals starting up at uh, twelve hundred GMT, and then the four v fours will be at uh, sixteen hundred GMT. So, I think we're gonna have amazing games tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm no. Excited the four... for it. <clears throat> sorry, <throat> sorry. The four v four finals are actually at the uh, seventeen hundred GMT. Sorry, I I missed that. It's not sixteen hundred. It's seventeen hundred. So no. there's uh, action tomorrow, two amazing games coming up. Yeah, I can't wait. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, I guess uh, I guess that's it for today. We got a 4v4 that ended in <laughs> a concede and a 2v2 that ended in a tragedy with Ulundi falling beneath the hooves of some elephants. How did you feel about these games today, Michael? I really love that we didn't have that many issues with them. Like yesterday, I'm, I have to say, I'm sorry for every everything uh, that happened yesterday. I hey, listen, man, it wasn't your fault. Plus, we got a great war story, right? Remember that time that we yeah. were in a lobby for six hours? <laughs> <laughs> that one time, yes, yes, that one time. I would have loved to see Port Iron Man go without a hitch. And today it was just amazing. The 4v4 zone of control go against Suomi. Then we did have this 2v2 amazing plays uh, again. Chandra Gupta just surprising everybody with uh, with this play. Who would have thought going against Zulu, taking his capital, can be a thing? Yeah, I know. I'm I'm shocked. It was it was awesome to see though, because he just it was like there's no way he's going to take his capital, and then he has units there. It's like there's no way he's going to be able to push the Zulu, and then he's pushing the Zulu. It's like every single moment I was just in awe at the ability of these Varu to be exactly where they needed to be. Yeah, that, that extra movement, it's unbelievable. The, the, the four movement virus, man, it's like, you can't handle them. No, and you've seen just... him to the left, to the right, to the left. It was like a dance, you know? <laughs> yeah, it was. And like, I again, like it was so shocking because he's so far away as well. It was like nine turns to walk to his cities. Oh, just in incredible gameplay. It was super fun to watch. Yes, indeed. Well, thank you so much for uh, being here to today with us, Potato. Uh, and of course, I hope uh, tomorrow we're going to have a lot of fun in the finals, the 2v2s and the 4v4s. Definitely a lot, a lot of uh, fun in the champ Clan Championship Cup uh, 9. Um, do you want uh, the file, by the way? Do you want to share the file with the results? Uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll get my people to raid over to you. and uh, or And you can show it if you'd like that. Uh, okay, sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get them to right over here. Guys, go check out on spot dot or on spot TV. Hang on, let me go. Because you you understand the 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 file a little bit better than me. You'll be able to explain it to people. Um, okay, thank you. Better sir. off better off they get it from your perspective, where you're getting you know the full information from someone who knows exactly what's going on. But you guys can check out the tournament CCC. It's the Civ Clan Clash, right? Uh, Clan Championship Cup. Yeah. Civ Clan Championship Cup, right? Yes. Uh, basically, it is like the Olympics for Civ. Tons of different formats, tons of different game modes. Teams from all over the world competing to see if they can get enough points to become the champions. Yep. 240 players with 138 matches and 12 clans did show up uh, this time. And of course, we're going to see uh, who's going to come up on top. Thank you so much, Potato. Much appreciated for the rate, sir. And of course, welcome everybody to the stream. Have a uh, good evening, Potato. And I do hope uh, you're going to get a lot of work done. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. And thank you for so much for showing me the beauty that is Civ 6 multiplayer. I'm going to go ahead and take a nap and do a little bit of work. Catch you guys later. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time.